Hey, deserving listeners, today is number six of the second campaign of Dungeons and Dragons Therapy. In these episodes, what, what? in this series of episodes, we demonstrate what it's like to use Dungeons and Dragons in therapy. And the idea goes that when uh, there's a lot of different ways to meet goals in therapy, goals in therapy like improve your self esteem, improve your connection with other people. Self-exploration, self-awareness, self-acceptance, social skills. All these things are things that a lot of people go to therapy for and group therapy for. But instead of sit, you know, standing in a, cor- in a circle and talking about your feelings, which is fine, you can also play a game and have fun dur- during it and not even know that you're actually working on those things consciously in the moment. And that's where Dungeons and Dragons Therapy comes in, and more specifically, that's where Game to Grow comes in. I am on the board of a nonprofit called Game to Grow, and it is a nonprofit organization that is ever growing, that is involved in a lot of geek therapy, if you will, uh, utilizing Dungeons and Dragons, Minecraft, uh, board games. All sorts of things that people like to do, and then you use it for therapy. In the same way that art therapy, you you, do, you use a form of communication and expression art that people like to do, and you use it in therapy. It's the same with using Dungeons and Dragons or Minecraft or other kinds of things. It is a brand new form of therapy that has uh, been not utilized enough yet. We predict through our nonprofit efforts and other people's efforts around the world that we will propagate this around the world. And in 50 years, it'll be as prevalent, particularly for teenagers and young adults, as any other form of therapy. But we as a nonprofit, we have a, we have a mission to not only help people directly, because we actually do provide services, but also to help others to start to use these things. If you're a therapist and you want to utilize these kinds of things, you want to learn more about it with, with your clients. Because, you know, to you therapists out there, imagine having kids come, you know, running to your therapy office. They can't wait to do therapy with you. Well, that's what this is like. Or to you teachers out there who want to, or other school people who want to, you know, have a group activity that bonds people, helps people with social skills, helps people with self-exploration, or you uh, community organizers like Boys and Girls Club, this kind of thing. Uh, these are all venues in which Game to Grow has helped people to learn these skills, and it's complicated. It's not just like, oh, I know how to play Dungeons and Dragons, and now I can do D&D therapy. No, it is way more complicated than that. You have to know the how to role play really well. You have to know group dynamics. You have to design the game. You have to pre-design the game. And that's what Adam Johns does for us as the dungeon master. He he spends hours prepping for this session. He doesn't just make it all up off the top of his head. And he preps certain questions and and all those kinds of things. And that's where Game to Grow can come in. They can actually teach you how to do this kind of work. Adam Davis, where do they go for that? If you'd like to learn more about the services that uh, Kirk just talked about, you can go to gametogrow.org. Make sure you join our newsletter at gametogrow.org slash newsletter. We have a lot of training opportunities. If you are someone who is uh, a therapist, educator, or community advocate, we actually have a uh, our level one training for therapists it has already launched. It's already filled. We already have a waiting list, and that's already almost filled. Uh, so make sure you, you go to gametogrow.org and, and join that as quickly as you can because we will continue to fill them. And then as soon as we fill them, we open up new offerings there. So make sure to go there uh, while it's hot. All right. Adam Johns, the wonderful dungeon master, lead us off. Awesome. Um, So as is always the case, I want to start you all off with a checking question. Help us warm up just a little bit and think about our characters and think about ourselves and share a little about ourselves with each other. Um, So my checking question for you today is, what is an item that you lost and never found? 
Uh, this could be something like when you were a child and you lost something and you remember that thing and it's, it always stuck with you that you remembered it and then it, it disappeared at some point and you never never tracked it down again. Uh, or it could be something as an adult, maybe you, you lost something very important to you um, and could never, could never quite find it again. And then in this case, I'm going to have you answer the question again as your character. Um, and, and of course, again, in character as your character. So in the first person, using your character voice, um, which I look forward to hearing from, from Kirk. <laughs> uh, uh, who, who feels like they're ready to, to answer this and start us off? I couldn't really think of much, but I'm sure there's lots of things if I really took some more time. But I do remember losing a tape. So Berto and I are musicians, and one of the ways that you – record is you're at home and you and you record onto an audio cassette. This is before computers and I would use a four track. And so all of my recordings from music was just on audio, just regular cassettes. And there was this one cassette that had all these songs that I had recorded and each song probably took weeks and months to write and record. And I lost one of those tapes. Actually, oh. we're on Zoom right now. You can see a, I have a whole stack of those tapes behind me. All these are the tapes I made before I you know, started making uh, computer uh, music and so, or recording on a computer. And I, I, That's brutal. Yeah, and it had probably had like 15 songs on it or something, and, oh. and, the, and it's just gone. You, know? it's, you just yeah. can't, uh, you can't get it back. So that's that. And then for my character, Blazonar... I would talk now. I have a normal, I have a gruff, gruff voice. Um, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm quite old. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, well past a hundred years old, and I've, I've lost a good number of things. Uh, I would say that my family would say that I'm not the most organized of persons, but <laughs> I did lose something dear to me when I was young because I wasn't I didn't know to be sentimental about such things but my father gave me a necklace just a simple gold necklace nothing too fancy and I didn't want to wear it because it was not fancy I you know fancied myself a fancy lad when I was a <laughs> lad and I misplaced it and just never found it again <sighs> brutal those are actually both really sad. <laughs> um, something about the loss of the music really hits, hits home for me. Uh, I can I go next. Um, so <clears throat> me personally, I was thinking about this. Um, when I was a kid, my two favorite toys were this X-Wing fighter and a TIE fighter. Uh, they were the official Star Wars uh, late 70s, early 80s toys, you know, so... Um, and the, the TIE fighter had the little wings that when you press the button, they would pop out, pop out, I mean. And you could put the little character inside. In fact, I, I think it came with a, one of those black stormtroopers. And the, the X-Wing fighter had a little button where the wings would pop open. And you could put Luke Skywalker in it and stuff like that. It was amazing. You were spoiled, Favorite man. Toys. I wanted those things. I never got Oh, yeah, things. totally. Well... One day when I got older, when I got older as in like maybe I was 12, I think, I was like, oh man, I haven't played with those in a while. So I went to play with them. And I couldn't find them. And I'm like, wait a minute. And then I'm like, oh, they're, they're in my closet. So I opened my closet and I was like, I don't see them. And then I went through every square centimeter, because we didn't have inches back then, of my closet. And there was nothing. And I was like, what the hell? Um, and it was this big mystery. I couldn't figure it out. And time went on and I, and I was like super sad about it. And one day I, I kept, and I kept looking for them, hoping that one time I would find them. I know where this is going. Yeah, and then one day I asked my dad about it. And at first he didn't tell me, but eventually he's like, well, I didn't know you were still playing with those. And I was like, what? Yeah, like I, I got rid of some stuff. And I was like, how dare you, what? Oh my gosh, I was so upset and heartbroken. I couldn't, to this day, I don't understand it. 
so that was it. I never found them because they were not there to be found. But it's extra sad, sad, and I don't know if you care to share this, Berto, but it was a pattern of his. Yes. Well, essentially, that started happening more with more stuff around the house, not just my stuff, where he was unfortunately like selling it for money. But anyways. But how much money could he have gotten for that thing? Just enough. Just enough. Now, funny you should ask me this question. Uh, I've given a lot of thought to these sort of topics recently. Uh, I've been feeling quite nostalgic for some reason. Um, Most often, I do not lose things. I have a very meticulous system of what I call stacking, which works phenomenally well. However, there was this precious object that I came uh, to find in some of my research. This was maybe 15 odd years ago. It was an an ancient artifact called the Orb of Rest. And I had read about it. It was rumored to exist. And I finally finally tracked it down. And I wrested it from the cold hands of of a dead scoundrel. Uh, don't ask me how the scoundrel became dead, but I then possessed the Orb of Rest, and it was phenomenal for its qualities, and I never discovered all of its qualities, but one of its qualities is that I never struggled to fall asleep as long as I had the Orb of Rest within, you know, some distance of my body. I would set it there, it would glow this most wondrous bluish glow, and it would illuminate, illuminate my ceiling, and I would gently fall asleep, and I would sleep soundly through the night. One day, I woke up suddenly. It was about 3 a.m. It was not a morning. I was not rested, and I wondered why. And I looked, and there was no glow. I looked all around, and in the darkness, I couldn't find anything, so I waited again till the morning, I couldn't sleep for three hours I sat in a meditative pose and that morning I looked all around and it was gone and I never again found it and I never again had a sound sleep throughout a night. These are all really sad. These are really <laughs> sad. I wasn't necessarily expecting these to be wow. quite so sad. This is a very sad start yeah. to our... He thought it'd be like, oh, I lost my favorite pencil. <laughs> yeah, kind of was expecting that. Wow. <laughs> can, I, can I also say like an orb that would help you fall asleep and sleep soundly through the night? I don't actually have trouble falling asleep. I sleep incredibly well. But my wife absolutely cannot fall asleep. <laughs> she She like tosses and turns and has so much trouble with it. And that just seems like uh, we would pay so much money it, it for be that amazing. object. <laughs> no wonder it went missing. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, it. for for me as a as a kid, I didn't have a whole lot of toys. I had like a lot of building blocks and things like that. So it didn't really notice when I lost those. But there was one time I had a Space Cadet Raphael, Ninja Turtle Raphael, a what? A space Space Cadet space Raphael. Cadet? Yeah, he was a space cadet. And the reason you know this is he was, he was wearing an astronaut suit. Uh, but <laughs> but he it was had, a Ninja Turtle. It was a Ninja Turtle, but he had an astronaut <laughs> suit on. And I lost the glass uh, oh, no. dome over his head, which oh, means no. that he can't be an astronaut anymore. <laughs> he doesn't have a glass <laughs> dome on his head. So he's just uh, Raphael in a puffy white suit. It was like a big puffy, kind of like the um, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. It didn't really look like an astronaut without the dome on his head because they were playing with this sort of like, he's an astronaut, but he's not a NASA astronaut. He's an astronaut because he's wearing a white puffy suit, like a space suit. <laughs> so it was just Raphael in a white puffy suit after that. Um, and that was I, me losing that... Um, Losing that little dome over Space Cadet Raphael's head meant that it, I had to work uh, so extra hard for the suspension of disbelief to put a, a you know mutant <laughs> turtle into space. It was just really hard for me. And a teenage mutant. Yeah. I mean, like, he was a teen. You wouldn't right. put a teen up in space exactly. without protection. Who could possibly, <laughs> right? Um, that was what I lost. I have no idea what happened to it. I just know that it was it was clear and it was sort of, you know, it was dome-shaped, so it could have gone anywhere. It could have rolled someplace. Uh, but Space Cadet Raphael was just, you know, puffy jacket Raphael after that. I always think that, that that's the kind of thing that gets, like, lost in moves and stuff. Uh, yeah. Like, rolled under a couch, and then, you know, years later you moved, and someone found it while they picked up the couch, and then 
threw it out because that was they didn't know what it was. It's not clear that it, it belongs to a ninja turtle in space. Yeah, it's just I mean, a, why, a, why would it? Why would it be a little clear <laughs> piece of piece of you know domed plastic? Um, yeah. But that was that's the what popped into my head when when Berto was talking about the toys. So I was thinking about the Ninja Turtles, space space Ninja Turtles. And uh, as far as Gergas, I travel um, much over the years as I've left the monastery, and I went to this one particular establishment. It was called Underpath. It was a sandwich place. And uh, they told me if I, if I patronized this establishment ten times, I would get a free sandwich from Underpath. And I lost my punch card. <sighs> and oh. I could not get my free sandwich. Perfect. <laughs> so um, I think my uh, lost item, when I was, I guess I must have been like 11 or 12, um, I, I was big into building stuff in the garage. Um, and I was also skating. So I was building like uh, skate ramps and stuff out of wood. And um, my parents for my birthday or for, for a holiday or something like that uh, gave me a jigsaw. Which, if you don't know what that is, that's a that's like a handheld power tool uh, with with a saw that that goes up and down, and and it allows you to to turn it while you're while you're sort of uh, cutting stuff out. So you can do different shapes of of stuff, or you can you can be very sort of freeform uh, with whatever it is that you're trying to cut. Or and you I, can I lose made, a hand. Or you can lose a hand. Yeah, I don't know why my parents trusted me at the age of 12 with a, with a jigsaw <laughs> that I was allowed to just have. Although, to be fair, I, I was already doing a lot of other stuff with tools uh, and using normal saws and stuff, so they probably just figured, like, yeah, I can probably figure this out. Um, and I used it a whole bunch. I built uh, a couple of skate ramps for my brothers and myself, and I had a great time with it. And then one day, it was just gone. And I, I, I blamed it on my younger brother who I thought, you know, had loaned it out to somebody or something like that without asking me and, and never got it back. And I, I, I asked him a whole bunch of times and he said no. And now as an adult, I, I believe him. I don't know why he would have, like, lied about it so steadfastly for so long, for, like, many years. Like, I came back and asked him years later about whether or not he, he knew any, what happened to that jigsaw. Like, I don't care anymore, but I'm just curious what happened to it. And he still says, like, I have no idea. He, he, he didn't touch it. So I'm convinced it just fell into the, into the void. I don't know what happened to it. I have, I have no idea where it, where it could have gone. And since then, that, that garage, my, my dad still lives in that house, but that garage has been cleaned out uh, several times. So I have no idea where it could have wound up. It, it would have been found by now, I imagine. I always thought that was so strange. And I was very sad when I lost it the first time because I wanted to build some stuff, and I was really upset about it. That's also not a small thing. It's not like a little helmet. It's not. It's like it's a whole big, right? right? No, like that's why I have a, I have a theory. It, it, your mom took it away from you, worried that you're going to lose <laughs> your fingers. You're going to poke your eye out. Like, like my dad bought it for us. For me, and then and then my mom <laughs> totally like, like let, watched me build stuff and was like, "This is a disaster waiting to happen." <laughs> and then, and then got That's rid a good of the theory. That's actually a really good theory. I, mean, I, I, I would find that. I would find things because I took out the garbage. That was my chore, and I would find my things in the garbage. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I'd be like, "What?" Like my mom hated these old shoes that I wore all the time in high school, and I and they were just sitting there in the. Not only the garbage, but the the bathroom garbage, which is really small, and these two <laughs> shoes are just sticking up. And I'm like, I'm like, mom, how did my shoes end up? She's like, oh, I threw them away. I'm like, why? Those are my favorite shoes. She's like, I hate those shoes. I'm like, mom, don't don't throw my stuff away. <laughs> Plus, I take out the garbage. You, you know, I see yeah, that. Like, how did you? You clearly <laughs> must have seen this coming. <laughs> yeah. It's a like it's a all. passive aggressive way to let you know. <laughs> Well, then I just double down on those things, you know. <laughs> right. Now, now I'm going to hide them away in my closet so you can't, you can't find, find them to throw them out. Actually, let's take a break, and when we get back, let us get into the actual game. What do you say? That sounds great. Let's do it. All right, we're back from the break. Adam Johns, take us away. Um, actually, Kirk, will you take us away? Will you give oh. us a recap uh, to what happened last time in our game, if you feel like? Well, the three of us are trying to find 
the Book of Fate, uh, our dead friend has laid a whole bunch of clues out for us or sort of Bill and Ted's workarounds that are dropped in, little items that are going to help us out. And last time, um, I don't remember where we started out last time, but we ended up, uh, we found the book to help us to read a map and then, right, is that the is that the main thing we did last time? <laughs> um, you got you went it's through the museum. It's been a while, actually. It's been yeah, like it a couple of months, it feels like. Anyway. Um, you went through the museum, and you got the, the materials to be able to translate the map, and you rescued Lily and brought her back to Ulian's apartment. Right. Um, and then, and then you, you, were, you were messing with my books, and then we had to leave right. uh, to go find the... Um, the inter- the person that knew about um, what's it called the writer of that poem. oh right Ezreth Ezreth Ezer Ezreth 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 um right and then got the key that I lost back in Feather Falls from my um, and this is the key to the book correct that is correct so the book has a a lock on the cover. This is supposedly the key that will unlock the cover. So we have now the key, and now we have to find the book. And we're being chased by both the green hand thugs and the paladins of uh, the fate uh, Templars people. Yeah, so we have to the watch the Templars of fate. Um, so Arizeth gave you the key. Um, you went in and, and did the whole poetry thing, and you now have the key. And the three of you are now headed back to Ulian's. Oh, apartment. right, because you did your performance. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Which is very successful. Yeah. The crowd, the crowd was loving it. They were snapping, snapping their fingers like crazy <laughs> uh, in hushed tones. Um, but uh, you're, you're headed back with the hope of uh, meeting back up with Lily and hopefully getting the rest of the translation of the the map that you have have gotten, uh, the, the decryption of that. Um, so we're actually going to fast forward a little bit. Um, the three of you make your way back uh, to, the, to the apartment with, with very little issue. And as you make your way back to the apartment, Lily is still working diligently on decrypting the map. It's just taking a long time. It's taking hours of, of doing that. Uh, she tells the three of you to get some rest while she continues to work on, on decrypting this map. And she's sort of deep in that process of, of referencing the book and going back and forth with the map and making notes and, and such. Um, it seems that there's a lot more to decrypt on the map than you originally thought there was. Um, so with that, it's been, it's been a really long time. There's been very many sessions. You guys have the chance for a long rest. Yes. You're finally so do I get to, to reset get... all my spells? You, so there's you a can... button. There's a button at the top that says "Long Rest." Oh yeah. Yeah, if you're using D and D Beyond, you can you can click the Long Rest button, and it'll say "Restore your hit points to maximum," and you say "Yes." Yes. You can go uh, ahead and restore rest. your hit points all the way to maximum. Bam bam. Confirm. You get all of your spells back. You get all of your your short rest recharge stuff back. Yes, uh, I will well make a your... bed out of this pile of books. Yeah, that that is actually my question. Is uh, Ulian's apartment has like one cot, like a single person cot? I think That's was it. what you described, uh, yeah. and then just books everywhere. And I think there's a chair, like a single well, wooden upright chair. <laughs> does he have a extra pillow? Because I'm very small. <laughs> I'm sure I have an extra pillow somewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's it's just the sitting pillow for your chair. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> all I need. Um, so, uh, I'm, I'm mostly just curious where everybody kind of hunkers down for the night. It sounds like sorry, you're uh, going to like literally make a pile of books. Uh, so a really quick tactical question. Yeah. Uh, besides resetting my stuff, there's some things I can do, like I can pick different spells and stuff, right? Yes. yes. So you you're can, wizard, you can change right? your preparation. So feel free to do that, you know, yeah. while we're talking. I don't know if I'm going to do it. I'm just... I remember that that's the thing I could do. Okay. You're a wizard, Julian. I mean, you, <laughs> you know, you kind of know what sort of things we've been running into, and so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, okay. Usually it's not super handy unless you you know you're, like, headed into a particular environment or right. headed into a particular yep. 
you know, fight these kinds of creatures or something like that. Okay, um, cool. But yeah, the option is available. However, they have to be spells that you have in your spell book. Um, yes, that you might have, yeah. that you might right. have acquired. Uh, so I, I'm I'm just curious. I'm assuming Uli and you sleep in your cot. Oh yeah. Well, <clears throat> I mean, let me think. What would it, what would Uli and do? Oh, Seems I suppose like he would okay. sleep in a shallow and it's like bath of water um, or something. He's just like. Um, by the way, uh, I'll just as soon uh, sit and meditate. Uh, if one of you or both want to use my luxurious cot, you are welcome. Mm, I'll take the cot. Thank you. Gierkes goes right over and just makes himself very comfortable in the cot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of imagining on this would do, little he, like, wouldn't turn it down. <laughs> uh, if uh, like it was being offered politely or whatever, he would he would jump right on top of that. No, no, he, yeah, he's he's already there. He took his, <laughs> took his like, like picking his toenails on the bed. <laughs> uh, would you mind though? Uh, not messing up too much. The, uh. <laughs> anyway, um, would you care for one of my pillows? <laughs> Gerkes is asleep. Yes, yes, please. That would be nice. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and Lily seems so deeply invested, she is not paying attention to any of this. She is literally just referencing the book and, and going back and forth through the map. Uh, if you ask her anything, she sort of answers answers with a short answer and waves you off. Um, in the morning, uh, as you uh, as you wake up, you can see that Lily is asleep and sort of collapsed over top of the the book and the map. Um, and uh, but you can also see that she has written out a full translation of all of the text that was on the map. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and assume all of you kind of wake up around the same time or you wake each other up or, or whatever the case may be. Okay. Um, who is going to read aloud the map? I'm just curious who's holding it. Um, I suppose I woke up first because I was already kind of meditating. So I will do that. And I'll say, um, um first I'll say, um, <clears throat> Gigas, uh, you might want to have someone look into your breathing uh, while you sleep. It's uh, what I would call labored. My breath, labored? Just, uh, it's loud. Ah, yes, uh, I'm, I'm a dragon. <clears throat> mm, I see. <laughs> Dragons are apparently loud breathers. Yes, uh, it's, I, you may not have noticed this, but I am... I'm a dragonborn, and, you know, I breathe fire. <laughs> so. Yes, this is very great. It's very handy when one needs to relax and meditate. Uh, in any <laughs> case, let me read what uh, our friend here has uh, discovered so far. Um, so I was going to link this, but I, I'm actually just going to read it aloud. The very first part of the, the translation is the part that you guys had already gotten, the part that Lily had translated for you previously, which was... Let Lily translate the map. Find the key. You must find Erezeth tonight. So that part you had already gotten. The rest of the, the translation appears to be almost a letter to you. And it goes like this. Hello, you three. Fate is a funny thing. I met each of you... Oh, maybe I should read this in, <laughs> in Thwar's voice. I think you have to. It's that clearly a letter from <laughs> Thwar. I think it's part of the canon now. All right, I'll give this a try. Hello, you three. <laughs> Fate is a funny thing. I met each of you through the wandering path of life, and even, th even though you never <laughs> interacted, I guess you were always destined to meet. Timely is the best way I can describe my death. I knew it was going to happen. I ensured it. Once I read from the book, I realized that my time needed to run short. But now you've realized that I found it. A truly astonishing artifact. The Book of Fate. It is real and it is dangerous. More dangerous than I could have possibly imagined. When I read it, I discovered what I set in motion without ever realizing it. Thus, your fates became entangled with mine once again. 
Your task that I ask of you with my final moments is to follow in my footsteps and do what I could not. You must find the Book of Fate before Hector Goldvergard and stop him from reading it. If the book falls into his hands, it means the end of things we hold dear. Oh, dear. Uh, I left the Book of Fate where it, where it had been hidden for thousands of years, as I couldn't think of any other place it could be as well protected. I destroyed the original map to prevent it from falling into the wrong hands. This, is, this one that I've created is just for you. This map will take you to the start of a trial of clues left by the original finder. The one who located the book and left behind the clues for someone else to find in the future. I can't lead you the whole way without risking that it might fall into the wrong hands. But you have everything you need to find it, save for transportation. Good luck. And then there's a last section, which is uh, actually written on, on sort of a separate piece of paper. Um, and it's actually blotted with uh, droplets, with tears. Um, but it, it, Lily is sleeping as you're, as you're reading all this, just clearly exhausted, and she's, she's out through the whole experience. Um, but it says, Lily, I'm so sorry I wasn't there for you when you needed me most. I'm sorry that I disappeared when your mother died. I always thought we would make up for the, time, for the lost time later on. But even with the book in my hands, nothing is as far away as one minute ago. Take care of yourself, and I love you. Perhaps I shouldn't have read that last part to us, but uh, I tried my best to impersonate his voice. I, perhaps I shouldn't have done that either, but this is quite intriguing. Um, there's also one last thing that appears to be translated that Lily must have translated before she fell asleep. It's actually written on the map itself. She, she did most of this on like a separate piece of paper, but this part is actually written on the map itself. Um, by the, the map has this sort of winding road and then and sort of uh, geographic pieces that are very nondescript. It really could be like any place. Um, but by the sort of X at the, at the end of the map is uh, a text that has now been decrypted that says, find destiny. Only the eternally silent monks can show you the way. Huh. I wonder who is destiny. Um, so I'll give you guys a, ch a chance to mull that over or react in character if you'd like to. Who's uh, the person and then when you're ready, you can wake Lily book? up and she might, she might give, you, give you some more information. Who is the person we're supposed to read the book before they get it? The the person you have to oh, prevent oh, uh, him his name, from his name was his name is Hector Goldregard. Hector Gold Goldregard. Yes. Um, can we do we have, has any of us ever heard of him before? Is he like a business magnate or something? Like he's a he's a fantasy world Elon Musk or something? Um, Kirk Blazonar knows the name Hector because Hector was the name of the person who was commanding the. Um, the uh, green hand troops that were after you while Ooh. you were in the museum. Um, oh. You didn't get a last name, but um, Hector definitely seems a little too coincidental to not be a part of that. I'll also point out, just as a reminder, because these things are all going to come back together, um, that Hector was wearing uh, uh, Templars of Fate robes and, and clothing when he was commanding those troops. You could see him through the, through the window. Um, and although the Green Hand have their own sort of uniform and, and their own dress, uh, the Templars of Fate do as well. And you definitely noticed Hector wearing Templars of Fate clothing. Well, I remember hearing about a Hector. Uh, he was the commander of the Green Hand people, thugs, and also what? in the garb of a Templar of Fate. So he must be, he must be the... Our, our main adversary, who is out to oh, kill us no. and, and find the book before us. This is terrible. That means he's upon it. We need to find it before he gets it. it looks like there's a, a trial of clues and destiny and an eternal silent monks. We still have a few items, do we not? Or did we use all of them? Like, did we use the pocket watch and... Uh, the tape measure and the hourglass. Yes, I, I actually meant to go over these as the game master uh, before we got started, and I forgot. 
Um, here is what you have you have left that you have not used. The tape measure set to 3.5 feet. It stops uh, when you try to pull it further than 3.5 feet. Uh, the pocket watch, which does not wind or tick, which is set to the time of 2.46. Um, you have used uh, the uh, and the hourglass, uh, which is maybe a couple of minutes, uh, but it has a black sand on the inside of the hourglass that is the times for about a couple of minutes. Um, and you also still have, uh, but you did find a use for, uh, the ugly crumpled up hat, I assume you still have that, the rubber duck, um, the, and the makeup mirror with lightly colored makeup uh, on, on the inside. I forgot what uh, we did with the, the mirror. Uh, you use the mirror to just translate a portion of the map that oh, said yeah, 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 to the, yeah, yeah, That's right. Okay. Uh, now, on the map, do we, like, uh, do we see any sort of measurements on it? Like, um, the, like markings of measure or anything like that? Good good question. There, there don't appear to be um, that, that you can see, at least. Okay. Um, in fact, the the locales and such like that on the map are are not very descript at all. They are They are not very helpful. I think we must wake up Lily, unfortunately, even though she must be tired, because we need to get a move on. So, uh, Lily, uh, Lily, dear, uh, wake up. I and she sort of grumbles and, and, and opens her eyes, and she says, just, just, just five, five more minutes. Five, oh, five I, more I minutes. wish, I wish that was so. Um, it seems like we have to get going based on what you've translated so far. Oh, oh yes, yes, of course. Uh, um, um, uh, you've read the note then. Uh, I, I did most of it. It's okay if you've read the sections for me. I, I wouldn't have expected otherwise. Given the gravity of all of this, I have to assume everything might be some kind of clue or, or some kind of of hint for what we should be doing. Did you finish? Are there still parts you need to translate? No, but uh, this part on the map. I think it may be significant of something else. Um, are you familiar with the, the monks of the desert up north? Am I? Um, and you guys can roll me a history check. History of nine. Uh, 13. I got an 18. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, it's a minus one on my roll, but I got a 19 on my day. I'm, I'm going to say this is falling into Gerkas' domain. Gerkas, is your, is your school located further north? That yes. might make a lot of sense if, that, if yeah. that was the case. I don't know if we defined it previously. We was in the mountains. Um, so the desert that she is talking about is on the other side of the mountain. So... Um, you guys may remember from our previous campaign, uh, the northern side of this continent is actually has a huge mountain range. Um, mm. When you uh, traveled with your other characters in our last campaign, you actually went up into the mountain range that was in that area. Right. Uh, and that was where you went to the cave that had all the bugs inside of it, and there was a big avalanche uh, that was up in the mountains of that mountain range. Uh, but the other side of that mountain range is more continent. Um, uh, Gerkas, I'm imagining that your school must be in that same mountain range, but further east. Mm -hmm. um, and the, on the other side of that mountain range, there's a huge desert. Um, and we don't have a name for the desert. So why don't you give me the first letter of the name of that desert? R. Uh, Kirk, give me the second letter. A. Uh, Berto. U. Uh, let's go back to Adam. L. Uh, Kirk. R-A-U-L. Uh, L. Berto. O. Uh, Rollo Desert? I think two L's makes a yeah sound. Yeah? Rayo? Rayo Desert? <laughs> R-A-U-L-L-O? Rayo, Rayo Desert? Rayo. 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 Ryo, Ryo Desert. Ryo. Um, you are familiar with this place. It is called the Ryo Desert. Um, and it's a huge desert. Uh, but there is a group of inhabitants in the Ryo Desert called the, the Silent Monks. They're basically 
these monks that have have like taken a vow of silence. They have, have vowed never to communicate. They don't just not speak. They don't write. Uh, they don't read. Um, they they have zero communication other than pointing and gestures, very basic gestures uh, between each other. Um, and supposedly they've been living in the in the desert for a long, long time. Um, and I think within eighteen, you know that they that their sort of decree is that they are traveling the desert looking for their um, uh, looking for uh, something important to them, and that they have decreed never to speak until they can find this this supposed important thing that they've they've been looking for. Uh, but they're they're often referred to as the silent monks. This sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I, I believe I've heard of this. The silent monks, yes, I'm familiar with them. They are in the deserts north of the mountains from which I came. Oh. Are you desert? I see. Uh, do you know anything else? I did, are they... Do yeah, they look I'm, for this book, or...? I'm surprised. They, that's, that's very good, actually. Yes. They are terrible conversationalists. Huh. Ah, yes, huh. in my journeys, I stopped there briefly, but <laughs> not long. I see. I, I uh, don't know much about them other than what I've read in, in history books. I've certainly never been up that way myself. But supposedly mm. they've kept a vows of silence through their order for uh, many hundreds of years. So some suspect even thousands, although obviously you can't ask them uh, yes. how long they've been doing it. And they wear long cloaks to shield them from the sun. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, and uh, there's something else. There's actually an oasis up in that direction called the Destiny Oasis. Ah, I did Supposedly the monks far, discovered it uh, ages ago, uh, several hundred years ago, um, and referred to it as, as the Destiny Oasis, although how they communicated that to anybody else uh, is beyond me. Probably. Um, yes, you might I have to so. take a trip, a trek of sorts. Oh, no, that is a long way. It is a very long way. Um, it will take you uh, on foot. It might take you weeks uh, or even or even uh, uh, months, depending on how hard it is to pass the the mountain passes, um, mm. which is an option available to you. But you guys are going to have to decide what what you want to do in order to to make I, your way up there. I wonder if there are any any books by these monks or any books about the monks. Mm. Uh, any information? Maybe there's a local monk we could. Not speak to, but uh, they, sign they with. They do not speak. They they are they are silent. Oh, sorry, you hadn't said that they, already. They Oops. they do not write. They do not My speak. understanding they is they don't write. Just write. Write. <laughs> oh, uh, right. I, I meant speak with them, but if they can't speak, uh, sure, whatever, communicate. It it's a possibility. I I have not heard of any of them in in the city down here. Uh, most people join the order for the silence. Uh, it would seem odd to have somebody reject that and uh, come back down to a loud and bustling city. Blazon, uh, you must have come across some of these, and uh, do you not know of any any of these monks? Or why why would you think I I'm from a, from a small farming town, and I'm uh, I've never seen a person like you or a person like you? You've been around <laughs> for so long. I just uh, this is this is difficult. Uh, what else what else can we learn from the map? What if we go in this direction and it's way off course and it turns out that we were right here where we needed to be? Listen, Ulian, you, you are a wizard. Um, perhaps you can pull some strings and, and we can be magicked there. Mm. Hmm. That may be possible. Or we could find some cart, that a simple cart that we'll, we can pay a some pennies for, and they'll take us up there. I it, it, time is of the essence. I, I think if we can travel there faster, I think that would be better. Oh, but I'm an old man. It, it's hard to walk all that far. No, Maybe no, we, no. At least we could get some ponies and horses. I, imagine if we could have our ponies and our horses, and then a wizard could transport us there magically. Well, they uh, make circles for this reason. <laughs> Quick question. Um, so can you re review with us what's on the map? that we have so far on the actual map. Yeah, so based on uh, the, the map itself is actually turn, turns out not to be very useful at all. Um, now that you know what the final de destination is, it must be in this desert uh, or 
based on the description, it says find destiny. It must refer to the to the destiny oasis. Um, you only know that the that the map itself um, was is is a reference to that. Uh, it does explain some of the landmarks. You can see that there are mountains that that are on the map, and you can see that there's there's sort of a trail leading from theoretically where you are, maybe up past past the mountains. But it basically is a map that dead ends into the desert in the oasis. Um, and now that you know the end destination, you can put together the rest of the of the route. Um, and it does seem to take you on a specific route through the mountains. Um, although whether or not you actually need to follow that route or just wind up at the destination is up to you. Right. Very well. Uh, oh, and sorry, one more out of character thing. So, um, are there mechanisms for traveling faster than? Yeah, it's probably. Yeah. I mean, you could. So there are wizards high enough level who could actually transport us. Okay. If they knew about it, you'd have to find a wizard that actually knew of the, at least nearby, so we could skip a lot. Okay. Of the... Could I roll for knowing someone? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'll point out some other transportation options that are available okay. for you just to sort of paint the world as well. Um, so obviously you could you could go on foot. Uh, it might take a long time, but it is possible to do so. Um, you could also travel. You could buy your own cart and horses. Uh, that is an option available to you. Um, although the mountain passes may be a little difficult to traverse with a cart and horses, but not impossible. Um, uh, certainly a possibility. Uh, you could also travel along with a caravan, which might be a little safer in, in the event of like bandits or or you know a, a, a stuff falling over the the trail or or something that prevents the the cart from traveling. You have more people around that can like help lift a big tree out of the way or something along those lines. Um, you also have available to you the mountain passes stretch the full uh, width of the continent, uh, but the um, Desert butts all the way up against the eastern ocean, um, and the city that you are in also is is close to the to the ocean side. Um, so one possible option available to you would be you could charter a ship and go around the mountains um, from the from the eastern side, uh, and then dock somewhere up high on the other side of the mountains, and then walk your way or cart your way or whatever horse your way in into the desert from there. Uh, that is an option. Also, we have outlined airships as being a part of our world. Um, and in fact, there's a whole airship festival that is happening right now. Oh, that's uh, right. So you could <laughs> charter right. an airship. Uh, uh, none of you own an airship, this. and none of you necessarily even know how to fly an airship. Uh, but well, we could you could steal one. <laughs> you could right, you could try to steal one and fly it, or you could you could try to convince somebody to to mm. let you climb right. aboard yeah. or or charter. I, I have I have an idea then. All right, okay. we need um, Han Solo. Um, I happen to be very influential with the local uh, magic community, and I would be most glad to uh, inquire about fast travel. Uh, however, as of recently, I may have come across uh, some issues. I, I, I may have said the wrong thing at one of our gatherings, and I don't know if it would work for me to request right now. We may need some cooling down period is all I'm saying, really. Can we do a can we do like a super fast like just flashback cutscene <laughs> sure, of sure. like you being in like a wizard's hall <laughs> gathering sure. and like saying something that just offends everybody in the wizard's yes, hall gathering? Yes. yes. Um uh excuse me, uh, pardon me. I, I just would like to ask a question really. Um and you know, I mean no offense really, but I notice quite a few of you are, uh, you know, humans, and uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I love you. I mean, some of my best friends are humans. Um, but do you really believe that humans can do the best kind of magic? No, no, listen, I don't... What, what, what do you... No, I'm just... I am simply... Uh, uh, understood. Uh, I, I'll show myself. Oh, you will show... Very well. Goodbye. <laughs> um, there was a lot of shouting in the background and people <laughs> people raising <laughs> raising fists in your Apparently direction. Apparently, Ulian is a little racist and didn't <laughs> yeah, realize it. I, I didn't know. <laughs> um, uh, we sort of cut cut to that scene and then back back to you <clears throat> having yes. this conversation. So, anyways, um, I mean, it really wasn't anything I said. Actually, it was just more of a 
you know, people and their preconceptions of, uh, anyways. Blue, so blue lives matter. To, <laughs> so, geez. so we might uh, <laughs> want to, we might want to explore alternate means of transportation. I mean, I could try to learn some spells, but I, anyways. What about What, these, what if uh, I spoke to them? I'm, I'm very charismatic. Oh, well, that's, uh, yeah, that would, yeah. You know, I, I don't want to suggest this because I'm actually not terribly fond of heights. But um, perhaps we could climb somewhere high in the city and look around and see if there's anything we could use for faster transportation. Hmm. Climb somewhere high? What are you talking about? When like I was young, I some... used to climb trees and, and swing on ropes, perhaps. Like go to some building where we can survey the... You know, the other day we were on the roof of that place and I looked around. I, I didn't notice so many aspects of the city, perhaps... I don't know. It's, it's probably a silly notion. I think that is a silly notion. Yeah. There's only the mountains some way are that can... way. We can clearly <laughs> see them. Oh, that's fair. There's only some way we could, you know, go quickly, like in a direct line. But a cart and a horse would be can, can, civilized. Can a, one of those airships just kind of go by the window? It's <laughs> like, go the window. It's a good year blimp flying by the window right in that It's going moment. right behind Uli and... So Eat and then, Joe's on and, the and me and Gierkes are like are like pointing. <laughs> at what do you? What do you? Stop putting your finger in my face. Look. Uh, yes, we can read the books from my stacks later. Turn around. Right turn around. Uh, your answer lies behind you. Oh, right. I forgot about those. You, you see, though, those aren't safe. I've I've read a lot of articles recently about uh, you know the the. Unsafe conditions and... Uh, Chasing the Book of Fate is also not safe. Oh, I... Fine, but if something happens, I put this on you. <laughs> I don't like heights. So, so you're the B.A. Baracus of the group. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have to knock you out. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind flying, I just don't like flying high. I like flying low to the ground, very, you know? Very low <laughs> very to the low, ground. Very low to the ground. That's, that seems extra dangerous, actually. The ground is the bad part of flying. <laughs> <laughs> so I suggest that we go to the festival and find a, the cheapest pilot that can take us there the fastest. Oh, oh, very well. There's really no other way. But perhaps on the way, if we find other methods of transportation, we, we could investigate those as well. Absolutely. If we see any wizards, we can speak to them about transporting us. Sure. So since this is almost definitely going to come up, I'm curious how much money everybody has. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What do I have? What do I have? Equipment? Is that an equipment? I, uh, yeah. I have 10 gold. Three. Oh, I have current total currency and GP. What does three mean? <laughs> that means n not a lot. I believe I have, I have three gold. <laughs> Um, well, I'm rich, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think I think Lily probably has about seven on her. I really uh, wish there would have been some money in that vault, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been really handy. Yeah, we came out um, with mints. The uh, so I'll, I'll point out a couple of things, and, and um, Uli and you you would know this. You might not realize it, given given your character, um, but. Uh, paying paying somebody to teleport you somewhere usually very expensive. Yeah. Uh, like into the several hundreds of uh, gold gold pieces per person. I see. Uh, kind of kind of price range, um, depending on where you're going and who the wizard is and how much they like you and all of that. Um, but uh, okay. uh, it is it is a, a pricey endeavor. It is fast though. Um, Listen. So if you guys have I... a way to make some quick cash, that might be still an option available for you. Um, I don't also, have a lot. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Char chartering a ship also going to cost some money. Um, so you're either going to need to find somebody who will be willing to do it for cheap, um, or uh, find a way to to get some extra money so that you could you can get somebody to fly you somewhere. Or, um, listen, I don't have a lot of um, gold myself. But maybe one of you two is rich and could afford it. Uh, again, if we were using my friendships in the wizardry community, we could probably get it for nearly nothing. Uh, as it stands, what if we used uh, 
less conventional methods to acquiring one of those ships? Uh, well, you're talking my language. Let's do it. Mm. I, we might I'm, have to I'm do not that. sure I understand what you mean by less conventional methods. I go ahead and the I do a... Oh, five-finger <laughs> discount, my friend. I do a, a minor illusion. Like I, um, I, I produce a little floating blimp in front of uh, Gyrkes. Um, and then I, I have it like kind of just floating around his head. <laughs> and I say... Illusion. We will use illusion. <laughs> I, I don't think this illusion will transport us <laughs> over the mountains. Illusions, uh, it is Michael. quite small. <laughs> <laughs> that is not literally... Never mind. Let's just... Uh, poof. Yes, Let's just let, go. Us, let us go. Um, so it is daytime. Uh, it is the morning. Uh, since you, you have all nicely slept through the remainder of the night. Um, the festival is still going on in full swing, and uh, as it so happens, there are actually airship races uh, that, are, that are going on, as well as uh, several other airship competitions that happen during the festival every year. Uh, so there are races, there are competitions where people just show off how nice their airship is, like uh, uh, sort of classic cars uh, kind of kind of style, uh, where they're like, look at my classically restored airship from first first generation era of airships or whatever, um, as well as lots of people coming in with trade, uh, who are like trading airships, airship parts, um, or who are um, have flown their airships in, and, and there's a bunch of airships that are just trading material, right? That they've they happen to have brought in. Airships also happen to be a great way to, to bring in trade from other places. So uh, there's a lot of airships here that are working airships that are that are here to, to um, uh, just trade in shipment and such. Uh, Maybe we can, can find a, head to a, the docks an orphan. Area. Maybe we can find an orphan or a, sorry, a, a son of a, a single mom who is just a fantastic airship pilot, but he's kind of like a local slave, and then we can, <laughs> we can hey, offer honey. him freedom. All right. <laughs> all right. So I think we're going to leave. <laughs> we're all... Uh, yeah, I, I assume you guys yeah. are, are headed to the docks uh, yep. at this yep. point. And Lily is coming along with you. It seems she is, she is fully bought into uh, to figuring out what's, what's going on here and, and ready to... to uh, maybe a little hesitant about the adventure, but ready to figure out what, what happened to her father. So I think our plan is we're going to try to get on one of these ships and take it. I think that's what, that's what it sounds like. So my, my question for you fly is... fly an airship? <laughs> yeah, yeah. First I of all... I am does, very not smart. <laughs> does anyone know how to fly an airship? Well, can Lily I... definitely does not. If things what go well know? enough, we can steal a pilot, too. Hmm. I... What do I know? I know history. I know... You know history. Uh, arcana. <laughs> uh, I'm very perceptive. Um, um, you you can go ahead and roll me. Uh, you could have a book in that library of yours. That, I could have yeah, a yeah. book about airships, which Ro is maybe why I because I said I did say I had been reading a lot of articles recently about airships. <laughs> now scary. Yeah. Pretty fair. Okay, um, go so. ahead and just roll me an intelligence check, uh, and we'll see how much you actually know about airships. Uh, two, 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 two. seven. Ooh, that's pretty high. Twenty-four. Oh, all right. Um, I will say you have zero practical knowledge of airships. You've never been hey, on one. I don't know if you. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Which one do you use? Do you use the saving throws or the one up at the top? Uh, in this case, it was just the. Uh, the, the saving attributes. throws is plus seven. The one at the top is plus four. Yeah, the plus four. The plus four one. Oh, okay, well then, uh, twenty-three. Sorry. Okay, still, still very good. Nice. Um, so uh, you you have zero practical interaction with with airships. Sorry, you've never 21. you've never actually been on an airship. However, but you can you can fly flight simulator and get some uh, some mileage, some hours. You know. Yeah, you didn't really have any books that like showed you the <laughs> controls from a first person perspective of, of the airship. Oh, so I, I'm predicting that Birdo rose a one when we're like at the peak. <laughs> <laughs> You're flying up the highest possible point. Uh, Lindem like Lind Lindenberg, isn't it? The, the humanity. Lindenberg. <laughs> yes. Uh, the, uh, uh, what you do, do know, though, is you learned a lot about airships. Uh, you know the general idea about how they fly. You how know, scary they are. 
Uh, you, you know that there's a bunch of different kinds of airships, um, not only that use different sort of uh, uh, gases in order to fly and such, but uh, also several different <laughs> kinds. There are, there are a bunch of magical kinds of airships uh, oh. that, that also exist and that you, you know, propel themselves purely with magic. Often the, the really, really nice airships don't have a balloon or anything like that. They are just ships that, that propel through the air using magic, which is amazing and also very expensive and, and you know very tough to get um but there there are a lot of different varieties and a lot of different options so you, you know about airships in general i'm kind of a an expert when it comes to airships really i just uh just don't feel comfortable but i i'm pretty sure i could pilot one i've i've read a, just about every book about them but, you know i've have you ever tried to pilot one before yeah I thought about it so often, really. It's, it's, it's scary, but um, but anyways, yeah. Well, there's uh, things it, that one does. If ooh, if we ooh, can't ooh, manage to confident. steal a pilot, then I guess you're our only option. I, I yeah. could be an option. That's not true, but yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's. Ooh, no, we, we have more options. Nice. I just there's there are four of us, so. Um, if something happens to Ulian, let's let's draw straws. As you're as you're making your way to the docks, you're you're seeing all sorts of airships that are flying around. Um, they they fly around up high above the city uh, throughout the whole um, festival. But uh, the docks is where they really come down. You get a good chance to see them up close. And a lot of these ships, especially the ones that are like being sh- shown off for like how beautiful this ship is, they're not really flying around. They can fly. Uh, but they're really like sitting in dock specifically so that people can come and look at it. Uh, and that's really like the, the point of, of those. So there's lots of that, that kind of thing. The docks are really full of airships right now. And airship docks uh, are uh, they, they're sort of right next to the water ship docks. Um, but they're stacked up high. So there's these tall mm. buildings that have many docks that are sort of sitting on top of each other. Um, and the airships are all docked in at these at these planks that are coming off of these these really tall towers, um, specifically designed for the the airships to dock on. Can I when I when one does a minor illusion, how big can a minor illusion be? It it should say I, I think if you click on like, it. Okay. It it's says, like two feet by two feet or something, or five feet by five feet. Uh, yeah, five range area thirty feet by five feet. Thirty feet must be the range. Yeah, area is the five yeah, the feet. Yeah, five, five, five foot cube. cube. So. Yeah. Okay. Five foot cube. Uh, okay. Um, what what is your what is your plan here? What are you what are you looking for to steal? I I think so. In my mind, I was thinking, you know, Wait, are we talking about this together? Oh yeah, yeah. Let me just. Okay. What if we made it look like a fire was starting and everyone freaks out and, you know, fire starting in one of these uh, ships and while everyone is freaking out, we use that as a, you know, di- a diversion and we will take one of these, uh, the other ships. That's an idea. I could also sneak onto a ship. You could tell me how to fly those things and I'll meet you outside town, pick you up. Hmm. Well, listen, uh, I could tell you about it, but that would just be academic knowledge. You wouldn't necessarily or know. Or I could sneak on and, you know, you can turn invisible. I know I've seen you do it before. This is true. I can turn invisible, yes. I, you might I, even be able to turn him invisible, too. I think we should bring a real pilot with us. That's that's that's, that's my that's my hope. That's that's top tier. That's top I, tier. If I, uh, I, I steal a ship and a head. pilot... Yes. Yeah, so we'll get if I see one, I'll get on and I'll pop, you know, pop him in the head, take off or knife point. I mean, either option. Knife point. Now that I say it, that's probably better. Knife point. Yeah, knife point. That'll be good. <laughs> I I think well, let's try it. I just want to make sure we cover our bases. So, uh how about this? Uh Yes, we will. Blaze, you will hide. You will sneak yourself into the the one we select. I will make myself invisible. But you see, there are two others that are not invisible. So what you're suggesting is we take the ship and pick them up elsewhere. Is that correct? Oh, is Lily with us? Yes. Oh, I didn't know Lily was coming with us. Yeah. Lily Why is Lily coming with us? 
um, because she wants to get to the bottom of of uh, what's going on with her dad. Uh, she's her traveled dad, with man. you to the dock so far. So if if Blazonar is like not comfortable with Lily coming along, yeah, I turn. Blazonar's got to say so. Something rewind about the that. clock. We go back to your apartment, or as we're walking out, and I I say, Lily, my dear, we are going into the belly of the beast, and this is we are traveling far away from civilization, bandits. All of us could die. And but I'm please. old. I've 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 come to this uh, life well, and I'm I'm ready to shake the moral coil. But you're young. You need to stay back. This is a dangerous but, task. But please, I'm sorry. What, I, what you're telling me is that you're ready to die, and so you are a, a better candidate to go on this mission that might involve you dying than somebody who is going to fight tooth and nail not to die. Uh, when was the last time you, you faced death, my dear? Well, uh, apparently it was it was the last time around it was us. yesterday around when the us. room set on fire. <laughs> well, and then there was a day before at the funeral when you did get killed, and I actually someone brought you back to life. So yes, so uh, my experience seems actually useful, far more though. recent than your own. <laughs> but my point is, is that Thwar was a good friend of ours, and I'm quite sure that he did not intend on you coming along. And he was but my please, father. Her knowledge might be useful. Absolutely, she's and and you have you have other so relatives as well who you also understand would not be uh, in line to go on a mission of violence and death. And Perhaps my other we could relatives flip a would, coin for this because we have a difference. Would want to know what happened to to Thwar uh, in his final days, especially if, if uh, as it turned out, uh, he was fighting for the the savior of the world. Kierkegaard, what say you? What is where do you stand on this query? Uh, Lily, uh, uh, can you fly an airship? Uh, no, I do not uh, know how to fly well, an what, airship. Tell, can me, you, tell, tell me yeah. your skills. Yes. Uh, well, I am the curator at the museum. Okay, uh, so when we I come back to town, history. when we come back to town and we have the Book of Fate, you can help us with that. I can't believe you're going to cut me out of, out of this when it's my Lily, own father involved. Let in me ask history. you this question. Why should not we bring you on this? This is a I trick question. I don't understand your question. Can you rephrase it? <laughs> Tell me your greatest weakness. Uh, my don't say greatest, hardworking. <laughs> my greatest or that you have no weaknesses. I'm a perfectionist and <laughs> I try too hard. Lily. I've been through more than one job interview. <laughs> if I might, I, I, I believe she does have a blood allegiance and blood right in this circumstance and I don't believe we should be denying that and so we're bringing we're bring all so we'll bring all of Thwar's family all no, the weak we ones not. all the vulnerable ones no. that's that is that, a straw you're, man. You're that an is in, a that's an inhuman decision fallacy. that's an inhuman decision my blue friend uh, you <laughs> will bring us down Lily you could possibly cause us to an airship, die. Be and what will happen when you come Go across down. yet another uh, uh, indecipherable map along yes, your, your journey? Yes, what will happen? None of us can decipher these things. We've, de we've deciphered the map. We have the, we know where to go. If we can come back, if we get an airship. <laughs> you're, you're on a treasure hunt for an ancient artifact. How much do you know about ancient I, uh, artifacts? I have some other questions for you, Lily. <clears throat> How do you receive feedback? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> largely through yelling, apparently. <laughs> mm. Tell me about a time you worked on a team and overcame a problem together. When we <laughs> escaped a fire together. <laughs> uh, I this think is, using my father's really, clues is, and hints. I think she's this pretty is qualified. Not fair. <laughs> she's she's worked out, out so far. Yes, L Lily. If you were a breakfast pastry, what kind of breakfast pastry would you be, and why? A pop tart, <laughs> the cinnamon variety. Mm. Because you're I don't, hot and spicy. I don't know these. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're delicious. So, so Ulian, you say yes to Lily coming. I believe she will prove herself worthwhile. You want her to come. I, I, I would prefer that, yes. And Gurkis, you want her to come. I think she should make the choice for herself. You want her to allow her to make the choice for yes. herself. Yes, I believe in freedom. Well, it seems I'm outvoted. I, I understand your desire to want to keep me safe, uh, but uh, I, I am fully capable of taking care of myself. Yes, that has been proven. No, I'm not so sure. <laughs> but uh, You died I, at the funeral, and you had to be brought back to life. You were caught in a lab, and if we hadn't have shown up with that 
uh, screwdriver, you'd be dead there. If, if you had gone to that apartment building, you'd be dead there. You'd be dead <laughs> three oh, times over. She might over. be dead I'm if so we don't sorry. stay with her. I wasn't provided with a bunch of items, apparently, from yes, a person that's who predicted my point. the future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, my uh, point. You know, th there is one point, please. I, I do believe her life actually may still be in peril. And if we leave her to her own devices, as you've pointed out, Aha, she may not a survive. A great point. Uh, apparently, well, I'm, I'm, I'm under I've attack. I've already conceded. Really, I'm just... Truly uh, want if, to keep me safe. I'm just furthering my point that will not land on willing ears, so... I'm uh, just a small old man who listens to me. You are not that small. <laughs> you, are, you are not that small, Blazonark. You are just somewhat small. <laughs> I'm just a uh, small... You met a lot of people smaller than me. <laughs> I've had a vision in my head of us already at the docks making decisions about what ship to take. Apparently, I, I was just looking into the future. <laughs> I believe we should... Make that a reality. If Lily joining us has already been predetermined by fate, then allow us to flip a coin, and then we will then know if she is meant to come with us or not. I like it. Me too. I like. I like just out of character that this is this is Adam's way of saying like, is is Lily supposed to come with us? This is Adam's way of asking the game master if you're supposed to convince Lily not to come, uh, or if you're supposed to convince Lily to, to also, come with you. Do our choices matter? Has everything been predetermined? <laughs> yeah. uh, allow us to find out. <laughs> I Next have five of these on. coins. I will flip all of them. <laughs> so, I don't. I don't know whether or not I should I should reward this or whether or not I should punish this. If all the coins land on their side and roll down the stairs. Mm, I no longer have coins. Fall down a storm drain. <laughs> this must be predetermined fate. Lily, come with us. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead and and uh, uh, roll me a die, Adam. Well, determine what it means before you roll it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, I will flip a coin, and it will say, Lily comes and joins us. Um, I'm going to roll a d4, and I'm going to say, evens, she comes with us. Odds, she does not. And my d beyond crashed. I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to roll this gigantic dice right here. It's a sign. <laughs> it is a sign that, that the fates are not on our side. Okay. Evens <clears throat> is what? Evens is she comes with us. Okay. It was one. Oh. Right. Lily. It um, seems, Lily, the fates have decided. Oh. Um, this is unfair. Uh, what a ridiculous proposition to think that a simple flip of the coin should determine something such as this. Lily, my dear, when we need you, which we will, we will come back. But where am I supposed to stay until then? Uh, you here? may stay here. You may stay here in the luxury of this apartment. A luxury? Well, I mean, it's luxury. You can read any books. Just don't read the ones. You know what? There's an you adult sleep. section behind the you curtain. Need don't sleep. Read those. You didn't sleep well. <laughs> <sighs> Fine. Very well. Um... Since you've all made up your minds, I'm certainly not in a position to fight against you for it. Uh, but I let it be known that I don't like this decision. It, it is no. That you the, shall need me before. This, this was your uncle's will. The fates. Ah, uh, he didn't provide you with that coin. Who knows how much he actually knew or didn't know? Ah, perhaps we should flip this crumpled up hat. <laughs> but promise me that you'll make it back from this and actually retail, re regale me with the story of what happened. I need to know what happened to my father. I promise you that if we make it back, we will absolutely seek you out post-haste. Whatever uh, post-haste means, I, I, I just hear people <laughs> say that. After post fast. Haste. Yeah, post after haste. fast. I think it's, uh, or, or maybe it's like uh, mail. Post-haste. As fast, fast as the really slowest <laughs> way of communication. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll put this letter on a pony. The, po the post-haste. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, either way, she, she frowns and she grumbles, uh, but the three of you leave without Lily. Um, and now we fast forward once again to where you were, on the, uh, preparing to okay. figure out your airship. I would have sworn Lily was I here. Keep, I keep talking as if Lily were here, and I <laughs> had the feeling as if she had followed us. Almost I'm like still she said quite some stuff upset. to you on the way. <laughs> I'm still quite upset by this turn of events. I, I believe we will regret this choice, but whatever, we let's, we let's choose our choice. airship. Let's choose choice. our airship. Now, 
uh, again, Blaze, how is Gerkus going to get on? Because he cannot turn Gerkus. invisible. Uh, Gerkus. Well, so, uh, DM, um, do what's going on? Like, are there people by oh, paying for so rides busy. or like what, what's happening? It's in the morning, uh, and uh, there are. Um, I, I'll say it's. You guys had a long rest, but I'll say it's early enough in the morning that um, that it hasn't really like picked up to being super busy just yet. Uh, but it is still popping. Uh, people are are out. A lot of the airships, like the the classic car airships, have have sort of come in and are and are docked. And there's lots of people that are sort of walking around and checking out some of those airships. Um, and because checking it's out the early just morning. To- just to look at them, or what's the... Yeah, it's essentially, uh, uh, some of them will, like, uh, sometimes the, the captain of those ships will have people on on board, and they'll walk them around and show them around all the, like, interior of the ship. Most of the airships are not, especially those classic car ones and stuff, are not, they're not really, like, cargo ships. Uh, so they're big enough for, you know, a crew of uh, four or five or something along those lines, uh, and not really... Any any more than that, and they'd be they'd be really pushing the the limits. But oftentimes they're pretty fast, or they can accelerate pretty well, uh, or they're just classic. It was like the very first model airships, and they've just been restored to to working order. Um, because it's the morning, there's also lots of ships, cargo ships that are that are coming in uh, of varying sizes. There's lo- lots of like trade ships and um, and uh, uh, like smaller cargo ships that are like you know one or two man crews. Uh, on those ships that are coming in and just trading valuable stuff that they have found in distant lands. Um, and the morning is really when those ships unload a lot of cargo and unload a lot of uh, stuff or load them back onto ships and then take off. Uh, are are there any, like, stuff. civilians getting tours of ships? Uh, yeah. I think I think you can find some of the, especially the, the like, classic car ships or some of the, like, really modern ones. Um uh, are those are the ones that are are like toured by civilians, people who are are out this morning to to enjoy the festival, and they've got you know fried eels in their hands, uh, even though it's the early morning, and they're they're checking out some of the really cool airships. Okay. That are, Would you that say are, that a magic ship is easier for me to tackle if I had to? Um, I would say the opposite, actually. Okay. Um, the Less the buttons. magic ships. The, the magic ships tend, tend to require that you have uh, a real knowledge of the specific okay. spells being used. Although, although you are a spellcaster, uh, yeah, but, but the, the non-magical that. ships tend to be like, much more physical. So you can actually like, okay. move them around and, and problem solve what's going on. Whereas the magic I can always is, cast Levitate and be fine. <laughs> uh, for yourself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. So, so I turn to the Ulian and I say, so... You remember how I disguised myself during the funeral to look very much like Thwar. You you saw yes. that. Did you? It was very good disguise. Uh, perhaps we find the shortest pilot we can find and uh, a ship you think might be able to uh, be handled by your extensive book knowledge. Right. Well, it's extensive and knowledge. I wouldn't qualify, but sure. I impersonate the pilot. I get the two of us, the three of us on there, and then off we go. Off we go. What about the pilot? Good question. Um, we either, uh, you know, creatively deal with him, or we <sighs> wait for him to wander off, and we jump on and hope that he doesn't see us. That's, that's wonderful. I, I have a slight tweak to your plan. What if instead of impersonating the captain, you impersonate one of his, uh, you know, his first mate or, or whatever, whatever, and you come to him with an emergency he must attend to inside the ship. And mm. then I'm already in there with Gerkus. And okay. We so we need to find a short first mate. Yeah. Yes. Or even a short wife of a pilot. I can do a very good, good girl. Yeah. Or even a girl. I can do the daughter right. of a pilot. I just don't know if they fly the ship. With the, I don't know if they're part of the crew is the thing. with the. We just have to get them onto the ship, and yeah, then suppose. the three of us will be able to... Or whatever you feel most comfortable with that you think we'll be able to convince him to get onto Well, let's ship. see. Let's shop. Let's do some shopping. That, that's what I like to call... Montage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now it's a montage now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's take a break. Uh, when we get back, let's continue. What do you say? Perfect. Thank you. 
we're back from the break. So let's role play between Ulian and Gierkes. Ulian wants to convince everyone to become a patron, and Gierkes wants everyone to go to gametogrow.org to learn more about Dungeons and Dragons therapy. What would that sound like? They're both trying to convince the other person to, to do it. Gierkes, I have a very interesting proposition for you. Yeah, I'm so sorry, Ulian. I am, I am busy on my web browser going to gametogrow.org slash newsletter. <laughs> what was that? It's great that you are already on the web browser because all you yes. have to do is tap Enter one in my more email tab. address to be informed about all of the latest news about therapeutic gaming. This may very well be, but you see, you may need therapy yourself. I just hit submit. <laughs> Oh, Fantastic. Goodness. I was given well, so many you, you opportunities are... to select which subcategory of newsletter I should join. But you're leaving no opportunity to listen to people talking about opportunity. I love opportunity. Which is what you could do. Well, this is the opportunity in front of you. You too could become a patron of not any website, but Psychology in Seattle. Do you see? Well, Are you listening? Now that I've hit submit on this, on this web form, I think I have the time and energy to go to a second website and learn that's, more about this that's opportunity. Beautiful. I would, I would like to learn more about growing as well. Ah, Perhaps game I can visit to grow. Dot game work. to grow. This sounds fantastic. Very interesting. Yes. You, you like knowledge. Uh, I do. Two of the best <laughs> improvisational people <laughs> going at it. That was great. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> uh, should we, we, are we jumping back in? Yeah. Let's do okay. it. I'll Let's close it. my web browser. <laughs> <laughs> so it's gametogrow.org slash newsletter. <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Um, so it sounds like you're, the, the plan right now is that you're going to go through all the ships and you're looking for clar- clarify me for this. Yeah, clarify this for me. I'm, we're, looking, I'm looking for a for, first mate or a. Well, I'm, he's looking for someone who's related to the captain. He thinks that the wife or, or any woman is apparently better. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to tell the captain, "Hey, you, it's an emergency. You got to come inside." And that way we get the captain. But then I will have turned invisible. I'm still not sure how Garrus is getting in. But can you can you turn me invisible too? Would you have spell slots for that? Yeah, I think um, you, you can cast I can higher cast level, and you can two. get two people. I mean, I have two slots, so I could do one for me. At, at higher levels, when you cast a spell using a spell slot, you can target one additional creature. Yeah, so you cast okay. at a third level. So I, you could do either. You can cast it twice, yeah. or you could cast, so you could do two, two sure. second or, or one third. Yeah. But we might not need that. I, I, by shop. By shopping, I mean we are going to walk around, and we're going to see what presents itself. To the fates, if you will. Let, let's just see what we let's can see. find. So, I like it. So I'm looking around to see what we find in terms of pilots and others. I think that Perfect. ship looks like the one for us. It is blue with flames on it, and it is small. I think it was meant for us. <laughs> um, what, what you learn as, you, as you're shopping around, as everybody's sort of walking around, um, is a couple of, a couple of important things. Um, a lot of the really fancy ships, the really, really nice ones, also have some kind of built-in security for them. Um, whether it's a, a magical security that like prevents it from being steered by anybody but the captain, um, or whether or not it is literally like locks to the dock, um, where they like a- added physical locks that lock it onto the dock that you need like a key to unlock. Not impossible to, to get past either of them, uh, but uh, harder to do and maybe presents an extra hurdle that you don't necessarily have to want to have to deal with. Um, a lot of these uh, very, very expensive or nicely restored ships all kind of fall into that category. Um, however, it is the same airship docks that you're sort of traveling through that are also the same ones that are being used for the ships that are traveling for shipping and, and trade. Um, and those ships don't have anywhere near the level of security. They're also not as nice. They're kind of beaten up, and they're often older ships. They function well, but they don't look as nice. Uh, but those is the, ships is the blue fine. one. Is the blue one one of those or one of the fancy ones? It's one of the fancy ones. It is. It is like a, a really, really nice. We've got beautiful paint job on the on the side. Um, interestingly, the same model ship is actually being used. 
um, for one of these trade ships, and it is still blue. That it turns out that's that was the original paint job. Uh, but but this one like is crap. is it looks like <laughs> crap. Uh, you can barely tell that that was its original color. Uh, probably hasn't been washed in forever. It has sky barnacles all along the side the side of the ship. Um, Gergus, um, <laughs> that is a lovely ship indeed. But but Gerkes. I think uh, Gergus. But I believe those might be. Uh, too secure for us. Look at this one, though. May I interest you? In this one right mm. over here, you see that one looks basically identical to the one <laughs> you were interested in. And, uh, you know, it looks a lot more approachable for us. Uh, well, what say you? I, well, if if I know a thing or two about fate, I should flip basically a coin and find out which one of these <laughs> ships we should get on. Um, yeah, why don't we, we why don't we flip the coin once we're on the ship and then we can see if we were right or wrong. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's that let's seems, make our way there. That seems like a good idea. Let's go do our thing. The the ship that you're headed into uh, it appears uh, you actually watch as the what you suspect is the captain of the ship um, is sort of carrying a uh, a large crate like on a on a um, dolly. Uh, off the ship and and bringing it down, stacking them kind of off off the ship, um, and there's definitely it, an easy spot for for you if you want to um, sneak onto the ship. Uh, you can you can catch him. It doesn't look like he has a lot of help. Uh, he's sort of a, a gruff um, looking sailor type, uh, a a half elf, uh, but he is tall enough that he'd be kind of kind of hard to impersonate himself. Uh, but if he has other crew, they might still be on the ship somewhere. Um, the ship is large enough that it could easily accommodate a crew of of uh, five or six people. Even. So, do I see any other ships with any other people? Um, yes, you can totally see other other ships in the area that also have uh, some some other people around. So, if you're trying to find a ship that has like a person for you to easily interp- uh, uh, easily impersonate. impersonate um, then I think you can find one of these trade ships uh, where there is a, a halfling. I like the idea of a halfling sort of first first mate uh, or second in command uh, who's who's been like commanding a really really strong personality who's been commanding people. Uh, get get those off, off the ship. Get the captain will be back here, any moment. <laughs> um, uh, and has been like like shouting orders at at some of the the crew that are hired there to to unload stuff for the ship. Okay, so I see that, and I see how many in the crew? Um, you can see there are two people in the crew, uh, and then the the halfling first mate. You don't know where the captain is. Okay. Uh, you haven't seen seen the captain, or at least you haven't seen anybody that the first mate seems to refer to as, as the captain. Okay. Um, but he, the first mate does say, you know, uh, oh. oh, actually, I'll, I'll give you... The first mate says, when the captain wakes up, I want... Everything taken off this ship and ready to go. I, okay, so I, I forgot I, I, I can also disguise myself too. So if we needed to disguise two people, we right? Could. Okay. Okay. So, but then you have to actually act like them, which isn't super easy. But I um, huddle up with my boys and I say, "All right. So it looks like we have two options here. We can either try to get on this ship or that ship. The first ship." the beat-up blue ship, if we can all sneak on, and my wizard friend, if you could turn the two of you invisible and I'll sneak on, that's the easiest way. There's just one fella. If he discovers us, you know, I can use my creative means and we can be on our way. Uh, This ship, I can impersonate. Might be a little more hijinks involved, but more chaos. What do you you two think? Uh, I, I'm sure, Gurk, as you don't care whether it's blue or not, right? It's, it's, I, I, I think, I think Thor would probably want us to have the, <laughs> the one with the flames on it. After I all, see. you're attached to the flames. Yes, uh, well, it perhaps is. it is safer if there's only one individual that uh. we need to be concerned with, and uh, perhaps we can drag him in, when uh, you know if. If we still want to not trust my perfectly good knowledge, we could try that, or we could just sneak on, and I'll be happy to pilot. This first one uh, you are pointing to, it, it seems beaten up a little bit, and perhaps that is a sign that I should uh, beat up the captain. 
But if you beat him up too much, we won't be able to have no, him No, just fly. the right amount. Just, just the right amount. It might come to that, my dragon friend, but we want to make sure that we're on the ship first and that no yes. one can see us. Yes. But it just Very might come good. to that. All okay. Right, let's, let's do it then. So, invisible eyes, and I will... Uh, but, well, let's plan this for a second, because once we oh. don't see each other, we're not going to... Oh, sure. Uh, the three of us aren't going to see each other. Well, so, what about Lily? Oh, right. I didn't bring her. The, yes, I the child forgetting. was left behind, my blue yes, friend. Yes, yes, the yes. child with no fighting skill or value to our group <laughs> has been left behind. Yes. Uh, the coin. I, I, I would remember those words. <laughs> yeah, and, and <laughs> there's many other children and weak people in this town <laughs> that we are also leaving behind. <laughs> <laughs> I like your pragmatism, to be honest. <laughs> um, so, uh, hmm. Why don't you let me... So is, is the pilot kind of coming in and out of the ship? Yeah, I'm, he's, he's, unlo- he's taking uh, crates of stuff uh, that look to be some kind of food. Um, this sort of label labeled with di- various different fruits that he's essentially taking off the ship. Um, and he's taking them and he's bringing them to the edge of the dock and then sort of stacking them all up, uh, which seems to be sort of the, the routine for most of these traders. Uh, he's just doing it by himself. So he, he has to get off the ship and then walk all the way to the end of the dock and then unload the, the cargo and then walk all the way back to the ship and then grab the next one. And, and so okay. he, he's been doing that a couple of times. And he goes um, into the ship it. as he, one he goes, of the steps. Uh, he goes uh, down into the ship, yeah. Okay. He's got a cargo hold in, in the bottom, so he goes down okay. down some a ramp that he's set up and down and down the ramp into the ship and then gets a crate and, and comes back up. And how big are and the that, crates? That's also not the only way into the ship. There seems to be a doorway that leads probably with stairs that lead down further into the ship as well. Uh, how big are the crates? Um, they're pretty large. Um, I would say... Uh, uh, big enough for us to fit in? <laughs> Uh, big enough or, for you to fit in. He's Erica unloading the crates, though. He's unloading the crates? He's unloading them. Oh, yeah. unloading. I'm sorry. I thought, <laughs> I I thought he was crate. loading He'll them. Just take us back <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where are we? <laughs> back at the dock. <laughs> um, okay. So, hmm. It sounds like we can get on a different part of the ship while he's away from the ship. Yeah, yeah away from it. you could totally, he, he sort of goes down into the, the cargo holds of this big open open square section in the center of the ship, and he goes down a ramp into the cargo hold, and it has like these big doors that open up uh, for you to be able to, to open and close that section. And then there's a doorway that leads down into the more personnel part, portion of the of the ship where they're probably sleeping quarters and, Can, and it, a small kitchen and stuff like that. Am I able to hide my way to sneak? It? I mean, it's daytime, so am I going to be able to stealth my way right into the you know ship? Given, given it, that it doesn't seem like he has any kind of helpers or anything like that, uh, yeah, it does not look like it would be hard to, to do so. You could either wait for him to, like, get off the ship and walk down the end of the dock and then you could sneak your way in and find a better position yeah. uh, or you could wait until he's down into the cargo hold either of those would be pretty easy to be able to do okay boys here's the plan we go into that dark alley uh the two of you turn invisible and we all uh, make our way follow me i will whisper and you follow me we uh, he goes under the ship we will follow him into the ship and we will, at knife point, tell him, after Gurkis, of course, punches him, uh, to pilot the ship to the mountains. I love this plan. And we will promise him payment because we are we about are not to monsters. We will about to be yeah. We are not monsters, and we might be rich because of the artifact we are tracking down. Yes. Oh, I love it. Very well. Here we go. Eyes shut. You must not see. <laughs> um, the two of you are now invisible and can no longer see each other. Uh, okay. But you can see um, Blazing Blazing are just fine. All right, so I'm going to do stealth check, and I get a 25. I will roll his check here. Ulian, are you still there? Uh, yes, but if you uh, talk, we can okay. be heard. I was worried you were leaving. Okay, no, don't forget, if you talk, you will be heard. You're not uh, invisible to sound. Yes. Uh, perfect. Uh, you are very well hidden. 
Um, and the the two of you are invisible, so I'm not going to make you um, roll for that. Uh, Blazer, so, you, you have no trouble making your way onto the ship. And in fact, as you go down, uh, do you want to follow him down the ramp? Yeah. Okay. Um, as you go down the ramp, you can see he's probably got another, um, uh, let's say, another dozen of these crates uh, that, that are filled with fruit of some kind. Um, and he's stacking them up two at a time on this dolly that he's making his way back up the ramp for. And he's kind of mumbling to himself. Uh, but you're down in the cargo hold now now with him as he's kind of getting the dolly uh, up up against some of the boxes and shifting shifting them around and, and getting him. And he goes, uh, these bananas never, never stack well. What do you want to do? Um... Does he have any weapons on him? Uh, he does have a sword at his side. Um, looks like a scimitar. And it looks like he has a, a small dagger kind of closer to his back as well. Can Eeks. I go up behind him and just... He also has like a like very a... nice hat um, that he's that he's kind of wearing with a big feather in it. Mm. <laughs> um, Don't trust a man who wears a hat like that. Uh, and I'll point out just to give give this uh, character some some uh, character. Uh, I'm going to say he has a uh, peg leg. Uh, in Ooh. classic sort of pirate style, and he's got a beard. It's close, close cut beard, uh, but it's mm. kind of uh, spotted gray. Um, like it's not quite white yet, but he's he's graying just a little in his in his beard, and he's got uh, longer sea blown hair. Uh, Is he wearing a bolo spotted. tie? Uh, yes, he's also wearing a bolo tie. Uh, <laughs> just what I was waiting for. Uh, I'm going to grab him by the bolo, bolo tie. tie uh, <laughs> with like a nice teal and silver or a, a turquoise and silver yeah. uh, pin for the bolo Classic. tie. Classic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New Mexico. Uh, and cowboy boots. Bolo ties are really terrible. Well, he has a cowboy boot. It's one peg leg. <laughs> I can grab the bolo tie and then basically use it to, to strangle him. So totally, yeah. It's like built-in strangle wire. It's really a terrible, <laughs> it's a terrible thing to wear. It's not very responsible. You're going to get... Yeah. 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 He's getting uh, attacked a lot. So are we doing this the, the hard way or the easy way? What's our what's our plan here? It sounds like we, I was gonna, we were going to threaten him, right? Uh, yes. So uh, then, if you want to go Blazin for it, Blazin, you're sort of leading the way on this. So, what what do you what is your first? Well, move? we're right up next to each other, so you're uh, you're right behind him. He has not noticed you. You were yeah. very sneaky, so he has not like noticed you. You're you're literally right yeah, behind him. Go for it. I'm gonna grab him and and like put my hand over his mouth and maybe pull on the bolo tie a little bit as a threat. Uh, uh, I think you you grab him and you and then I I, I pop out of the shadows and I have my and I put my knife right up to his neck and I and I say be quiet or you will die right here quiet and he, he he doesn't say anything he quiet. looks pretty alarmed okay you will help us by flying us north and if you do so you will make a lot of money if you make noise or there's any kind of funny business then we will end this right here do you choose door number one or door number two. And understand, these doors are... Oh, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> <laughs> so you just want to charter a ship? I'll pull my hand back just enough so you can speak. <laughs> how, well, how much do you, you charge? You just, well, where, where do you want to fly? We want to fly to the north into the mountains. But you must wait there for us. Past the mountains to the desert. Past the mountains to the desert. To the oasis north at the north end of the desert. Yeah, just, just, just until yeah. we can find the book, That's and then you can pick us up. It is uh, a long story. I could tell you the whole thing. We have time. Well, the, the rates are usually based. Is just the three of you? Yes. Wait, wait. I guess he doesn't know that. It's just the... <laughs> well, you heard <laughs> all three of us <laughs> talking. <laughs> yeah. There, there would have been How four of us, of you actually. Are there? <laughs> there's, there's three. Usually the passage rate is based on the number of people. Three. Uh, that you use if, we're, the distance if we're traveling this comfortably, the... we could have four if we really... I could run back and uh, find... There's three. Well, if, it, if it's four, you reduce the rate per person, but the overall <laughs> price goes up. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it doesn't matter. But if you're we paying per cot, then it's it's really a, quite a bit cheaper if you want to share share cot space or if you want to rate. do a share we are ride giving you, along, along the way. Listen, that's, that's, we are that's giving a you a flat. Expensive. We will give you a flat amount of large amount of money when this is all done. I don't care how much you charge us per person or not. No, we do care. We want the lowest rate possible. We want <laughs> no, the discount rate. It doesn't matter, Blazina. We, we want to have, go for free. Just want to okay. Let us. 
let's be explicit about what we want here. I would like to travel for free <laughs> to the deserts north of the mountains <laughs> the three to save the world. <laughs> Uh, I just, okay. Well, let's so just agree nor that normally you will I would be charge. properly compensated. <laughs> you, you will be properly I'm, compensated I'm for a fair, oh, low is rate. This, is it is it for free at, at threat of death, yeah. or is this a? <laughs> it's not free. <laughs> or am I being paid for this? Kirkus, which do you so prefer? <laughs> I mean, I would prefer to be paid and not die. Those would be my ah. my my. <laughs> my <laughs> you, you will be paid. My, <laughs> you will be paid and not die. Usually, there's a deposit. Cooperate. But Listen. I could waive the deposit given the circumstances. There is no deposit. <laughs> it's just there are two choices in front of you. Start moving, start piloting. I was or told else. not to move. I was he was the uh, man with the uh, he, with the he's like, restrained. He very clear move. about the You not can't moving see me, part. Julian, but I am restraining I, you. I reach over and grab his sword and I actually I take his sword out. And I, I, he's restrained by Gergas, he can't stop you. You so. cannot yeah. tell a man's intelligence from the color of their ship, apparently. And I, uh, I put it in Gergas's <laughs> belt. I put the sword in Gergas's belt. I think, I think so far... I've How been, do you, so you know where floating, my belt was? I'm invisible. This is a floating oh, yeah. sword. No, no, you, you must have... <laughs> did you become visible <laughs> when he attacked him? <laughs> no, that, a little to the left. I, oh, guess, oh. I guess I would consider that an attack. So, Gergas, you are, you are visible. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you can you can put it into Gerkus's belt, and he goes. Yeah, after they I, attack or cast a spell, that's right. I'm just trying. So, I'm just trying to clarify the the terms. This this uh, uh, smaller man here it's, it's, uh, definitely said I should move. Yes, uh, that's true. Okay. Do not move, but do not tell us right how now. much you would normally charge, and then we can go from there. Oh, okay. Uh, so for for a trip a trip up north like that, if I was already headed that way, I'd probably only charge uh, about. Twenty a person. Uh, oh, there's three of you. You said there's three of you. Tw it's, Twenty it's, a person, I would say. Just stop. With, with about half Everyone, up front. stop. We are not leaving this ship now based on the price haggling. <laughs> we are doing this, or we are not. <laughs> my my good man, we we have ten gold, and I actually take out all my ten gold, and I say. This is all we have for now, and if we manage to get more, which is possible, we will pay you forty total. Well, that uh, for, so, what, so forty is still less than my usual <laughs> rate. Oh, what what do you mean? What what would it be? Well, there's three of you. It'd be sixty. But yeah. I wasn't actually going to head up north. I was planning on heading to the east <laughs> to the continent in that direction. So usually I would charge an extra. I hold up my knife again to his throat <laughs> and I say, <laughs> like, given given the circumstances, I think I can cut you a deal. Okay. Uh, for you know my uh, regular rate. I'm but glad. you know what? I think I do want to travel up north. The, the <laughs> oasis sounds great. I see. Uh, to travel to in the desert. I assume you're headed to the oasis there. Very, very uh, fortuitous. It sounds like a great vacation for me to take. Yes. Uh, so now, what, what now, a wonderful happenstance. Yes. Now, <laughs> uh, do you need to... Um, uh, you probably can keep everything on the ship. You don't need to unload any more for now. Is we will correct? need supplies, so that's good to keep these on the ship. Mm. And I like uh, food. Are you... Yes, I, I suppose the fruit that we have on the ship will serve as good food supplies. All right, then we will go. I, I did have a deal for the. Okay, so I cast at this unloaded. point. I cast a minor <laughs> illusion because he hasn't seen me yet. You know what? That so fruit's cast... probably gone bad anyway. <laughs> 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 I don't I, I ca... very much for it. Uh... <laughs> I cast a minor illusion to to uh, make him see this huge shadow behind, like apparently the third voice. Must be this huge creature, because he sees like this huge shadow looming. Well, it can only be five feet tall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, oh yeah, yeah, no, but, but, him, though. but it's all it's all a five foot long shadow. It's all about right? perspective, man. It's really close to his it's, face. It's a shadow. <laughs> it's just it's just very close to him, but it looks like it's it's yeah. a shadow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, uh, I'll, I'll also say for I'll it's totally the tallest this. five foot shadow you've ever seen. <laughs> But a small thing in the lake makes a big shot. So uh, yeah. Well, actually, and it, it it doesn't it doesn't say how wide. It can still be five feet wide, right? Yeah. So I can make it look like a the top half of like a five foot wide thing that's standing yeah. a bit behind. You know. Yeah. Oh sure, it runs into another shadow or something yeah. like that. Uh, uh, I'll I'll also say for future reference, you normally can't cast a spell and still be invisible. 
Well, no, uh, no, I, I will, I will get out of invisibility, but he's not seeing me directly because I'm behind. Oh, because he's facing the other direction. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I think you can, you can do that. I think, along with Blazonar's knife uh, to this guy's throat and the the shadow that appears, that's when he goes like, you know what, that fruit, that fruit was bad anyway. That was <laughs> that fruit was not. I wasn't gonna get very much for it. Uh, I like to load the good fruit and keep that for last. So you caught me at the <laughs> right timing where this fruit's all good and that fruit's all bad, uh, as it turns out. Good. Very uh, well. When, when, are, when are we departing? Now. Oh, perfect. Uh, that was works perfectly with my schedule that I had. <laughs> now, I, I might also be able to I fly the ship. I think I need my arms case... to pilot the ship, just as a... Okay. As yeah. a now, remember, point, point no, of reference. no funny business, and everything will be fine. Oh, no. They call me uh, Serious Stalwart Samuel. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> funny Samuel wouldn't be a letter. That's another guy. That's another guy. Yeah. Funny Samuel. Silly Samuel. Silly Samuel. <laughs> Silly Samuel. Silly Samuel is a different airship. That's a, that's. Oh, oh. I don't fly on that airship. <laughs> wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> Look, there. And another advantage is I know. Very silly. I know so much about these kinds of ships. So if you need to ask any questions. I'm here for you. <laughs> so you're ho holding me at knife point, and uh, which you know is fine. That's totally okay. Uh, but, and then but you're also gonna tell me how to fly my ship. Oh no, I, I don't presume. I just uh, if you if you have any questions, just don't <laughs> don't be afraid to ask. That's all. <laughs> right. I'll, okay, I'll make I'll make sure to. Ask you about questions for <laughs> flying my ship. <laughs> yeah, Gerkus is going to let him go and then take the ramp into the ship so we can dock. Um, the uh, the ship is is docked. It's just really tied off at the at the dock. This is a dirigible ship, so it has a big balloon on the on the top, but it also has these uh, sail arms, which are currently pulled in um, in order to prevent it from picking up wind uh, and sailing off accidentally while, while it's on the dock. Um, so you can go up. Uh, I, I don't think this, this part is hard for you to figure out, Gerkus, um, especially because you're not really on a time crunch or anything like that. So you fiddle with the knots that have tied the, the um, uh, ship to the dock, and you're able to untie them. And the, the ship just starts to like slowly drift uh, away from the dock once it's, once it's untied. Um, and then... Uli, and I think you know enough about ships that you know how to deploy out the the um, sail arms. Uh, and then Blazonar, are you keeping this guy to, to knife point? Uh, yeah. At least while you're drifting away from the dock and yeah. until you get away from the city. Yeah. Um, so you're you're walking him up uh, the top of the ship. He he sort of stiffly walks up um, to the to the main steering wheel um, and makes his way to the top of the ship. Uh, and he sees there, there is. There's one Gerkes problem. Un badly untying his his uh, knots, but he doesn't seem to say much about it. There, there is one problem. Um, <clears throat> you have to go to the my bathroom? skin is blue. My skin is already blue, so you're not noticing <laughs> how I'm feeling inside as this thing starts taking flight. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just you say turn, uh, you turn a, a slightly more greenish. <laughs> <laughs> Ulian is freaking a little bit out. Might be a little bit of a panic attack happening here. <laughs> um, that, that it's, it's it is an un, uneasy feeling. In fact, if uh, I don't know whether or not any of your, any of the rest of your characters have ever set foot on an airship, uh, but as soon as it starts to drift from the dock, um, it gives you a little bit of an uneasy feeling. It's like being on a, a regular water ship where, uh, you know, it, it moves back and forth with the, the ocean waves, uh, but the additional Z-axis of drifting up and down gives it a distinctly different flavor and a distinctly different stomach churning to go along with it. Um, and uh, actually, whether or not um, uh, Blazonar and Gerkes would notice that, Uli, and you're looking a little... It. A little uneasy, uneasy, um, uh, but it looks like your your captain Samuel definitely seems to notice. And as he's he's sort of pulling the ship, and he goes, "No, no, move, move that one to the to the right, that one to the right." Um, I'm trying he to says, leave me. Uh, he says, "Don't worry, you'll get your air legs momentarily. Uh, I'm sure it'll it'll come in no time to a, to a fellow such as yourself." Air legs or air leg. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, oh, you're making fun of me because I only have one leg and I'm narcoleptic. Well, that's <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that's that's no way to treat a captain that you're holding a knife point. Um, and he, uh, and he starts to Wait, pull the pull the ship a out. A second, did you just say narcoleptic? Um, set the sails to fly, and then the, the ship uh, uh, sails uh, billow, and then take off as the as the ship starts <laughs> to take off into the into the sky. Um, and uh, Blazonar, you watch as he says, um, "To the north," and then sort of uh, nods <laughs> off for a second um, as he's as he's steering the wheel, and you you notice him loudly snoring uh, oh, just God. for a, a, a quick <laughs> second before he wakes himself back. Oh up. God. <laughs> This can't be a problem. Um, so I actually am secretly exhilarated. I've never, yeah, I'm a, I'm a short person anyway, and I've never flown anything, whether by you know nature or otherwise. And so I'm, I'm, you know, I, I have a big smile on my face. Are you, are you sitting at the front, going, "I'm the king of the sky"? <laughs> <laughs> um. I, I think that's actually the the three of you take the ship it's and it, very it cinematic turns and, way to and end it starts the yeah starts heading heading north and I think that's the that's the most cinematic way we can end the the campaign for this not the whole campaign but this, this and episode. that's the end of the campaign and that's the end of the campaign you <laughs> and they north went north with their new friend <laughs> and the rest of the Qu- campaign is quibbling just and like... arguing about who killed who <laughs> just, uh, just the text in the are the you a dragon they went prince? down to the north. Oh yeah, they Am moved on to the north. No, are you a Dragon Prince fan, Adam Jones? Oh yes. Uh, okay. I totally am. Uh, okay. There's some inspiration from. I just uh, caught the little bit of narcolepsy. <laughs> yeah. Narcolepsy. <laughs> yeah, it's totally true. If you haven't watched the Dragon Prince, it's a it's a very fun show on Netflix, um, and there is an absolutely hilarious. Uh, it's so good. Pirate ship captain. No, it's character. it's seriously some of the best writing I've seen in a long time. Really? I had been told repeatedly by a friend, you have to watch it, have to watch it. I kept putting it off. Finally started watching it. Amazing. Dragon Prince. The Dragon I really, Prince, yeah. I really huh. struggled to make it through the first season uh, because there's, a, there's an odd sort of animation quality to the first season that goes away after the, the they get into the second and third season. Um, mm. And it really put me off to a lot of the show. The oh, writing was still really good, but the, yeah. but the, the animation thing really... Uh, made me uneasy about it, but it really picks up and becomes absolutely yeah. spectacular. Worth mm. powering through for sure. Very good. Um, uh, let's do uh, let's do our checkout. Let's do spotlights for for someone else uh, who feels like they have a spotlight for someone else. That they uh, love I'll do show. for John's because of both the Lily uh, debate and the um, pilot. C- comedy comedy situation <laughs> I mean especially the pilot I, th- I thought that because it there was a point where I was like well you know this is a serious role playing si- or a serious kind of D&D moment and then it just quickly decompensated and uh, I don't know you seemed very much in a, the comedy driver's seat if you will at the time you know <laughs> and uh yeah, that that was uh, that. I mean, that was. It, I wish people could actually see us while we're playing because I was I was actually you know almost falling out of my seat laughing. So <laughs> that's my spotlight. Uh, it, it worked out really really amazingly. I I feel like that that, that moment's gonna stick with me for for a long time. The whole the whole, the whole conversation there was really spectacular. Yeah. I appreciate that. I I mean I gotta say. I'm so torn because on the one hand, I'm like, I'm sitting there, Blaze, you're gonna, you're gonna leave her behind. That's so cold. <laughs> and then I was thinking, oh, you know what? I'll just push back in character and I'm sure Blaze will. And Blaze stuck to his guns <laughs> viciously. He's like, here's all the examples of how you've been basically <laughs> killed. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And then uh, I loved, I loved uh, Gierkes's, um <laughs> solution to the whole thing, which was such a thing for him to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that that whole scenario was hilarious because it was really like so meta. You know, on the one hand, we're like, should she come? I guess she shouldn't come. <laughs> and then we're like debating with her. <laughs> it was so great. Like, um, my my spotlight goes to 
Kirk for playing that as uh, like. She is a child, and she will not come with us. <laughs> yes. There are lots of useless people we could bring, but we're not bringing any of them. <laughs> I thought that was great. Yes. Very Cold, nice. hard truth. <laughs> yeah, and I think she has four hit points, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Just I mean, really I think, practical. I think still breeze with, goes by, and she's dead, <laughs> yeah. you know? In reality, uh, I, I kind of... I kind of un underplayed what I would have because Ulian is supposed to be a pragmatist, so like he actually wouldn't have been trying to keep her. But I, I think what what I could have done is he would have seen the val. Actually, it would have been the other way around. He wouldn't have cared as much that she was a, that she was at risk. It was that he thought that she would be useful. Right. Mm. But I I didn't play it right. But that's. No, you did. That's what I... Yeah, I think okay. I think you did that pretty well. I think, uh, okay. like, conceptually, especially from Ulian's perspective, she's an academic. Yeah. And, yeah. and Ulian can appreciate the usefulness of having another yeah, yeah. academic who maybe has knowledge that he doesn't have. Um, it was just there's a little bit of Bairdo in there going, <laughs> we can't leave her behind. Come <laughs> on, you guys. <laughs> um, and I don't know if you want to answer this, Johns, but you didn't need her to come along, did you? Or um, did you? Okay. Here's we'll what see, I will tell you. We'll get to you. an impassable puzzle later. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure, Lily, oh, whoops! Oh, that'd be so fun. Well, oh, did you guys not break? All right. <laughs> so what? What I will say is, um, I had assumed that you all were just going to have her come with uh, to have her be involved. So I was assuming that she was going to come with. But as soon as you in introduced the idea that, like, wait, 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 maybe uh, Lily, Lily shouldn't come with us. I was like, all right. I want to see how this plays out. Um, so I came up with, with a couple of real real quick on the spot different directions that this could go, depending on whether or not she comes with or whether or not she doesn't come with. Okay. So that's why I left it up to a roll of the dice where I said, all right, I, I think this could be interesting one way and I think it could be interesting the other way. Um, and so There's I a handprint on the temple. It looks like Lily's hand. <laughs> <Duh>! <laughs> So I won't spoil it, partly because I'm yeah. not entirely certain which direction, <laughs> what, what, what way I'm going to go. The fates are strange. <laughs> um, I was uh, I was just planning, I, I, I planned this game with my wife, um, because normally I, I always like to have a co-planner for a lot of my D&D games. It really helps a lot. I, I strongly recommend it for anybody who is... Um, uh, being a game master, especially if you're a game master for a whole lot of games, helps you keep track of stuff. But I, I have to do my planning out loud, um, and so it's really, really helpful to have somebody else that I bounce ideas off of or who can give me different insights. And I do oh. this with Adam when we plan for Game to Grow groups. And, by the way, why don't you plug your new podcast, Johns? Uh, sure, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. So um, along those lines, my wife and I, uh, because we've been doing a lot of planning for this game, realized that it would be fun for people to listen into our to our banter as we plan for games. And nice. so we created a podcast called The Next Session, uh, which you can oh. listen to. And it's it's an advice podcast where we answer questions for game masters who are interested in planning for their next session. And we provide some different options and advice for how they can help plan that. Um, and you can listen to that at... Uh, wherever you listen to podcasts, uh, it's called The Next Session, but you can also look us up on, at thenextsession.com. Um, Do you talk about so, as my wife was, this campaign oh, on the ahead. podcast? Um, I don't think I have yet, uh, but I wouldn't provide any spoilers for this campaign yeah. on, on that podcast. So, yeah, because so I'm going to listen to it. Feel free to listen to, listen to that podcast. You won't have any spoilers for this campaign at least yeah and, and that's a that's a it's a really great idea for a podcast because as a dungeon master master uh, it is useful for anyone dming to get a behind the scenes it's like watching uh, the documentary of how you make jaws or something it's you yeah. get to see like the nuts and bolts of how do you because i feel like a lot of dms when they start out they think well, you just read the module and you just go for it. And there's so much that you have to plan for just in case because you, it's hard to think on the fly, particularly like plot points, you know what I mean? Uh, for me, when I plan out things, I like to, and I think John Jerry like this too, I like to leave a lot of things up to the players to decide what's going to happen. And so it pretty much like quintuples the planning because I, I have to think about five different directions that I think they might go. But I 
don't want to plan it too much because I might be wasting all that time on four paths that they're not going to. So I, I have to have a skeleton enough to predict for myself that I'll be able to, you know, role play it in the moment. And at, for me, it's actually taking a lot of notes. That's how I do it. I like write it all out. And then mm -hmm. it's just sort of in my head, like cramming for a test. And then in the moment, I can kind of look at the notes really quickly, but I don't want to depend on it because I don't want to have to, you know, read something. So a podcast like yours, uh, the next session is a great idea for DMs of any level, really, to to learn the nuts and bolts of how do you plan? Because that, because that's really where it comes. That you know, it's a major component. Obviously, like role play and making it fun, and and maybe in the podcast you talk about like, ooh, you know, how are we going to make it fun for Umberto? And Berto's character likes to do this, and like, what what's the what's the nugget of his enjoyment going to happen? Okay, what's this character's enjoyment? Do you talk about that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely, and, and get into the idea of of. Uh... Um, making the game that your players want to have, as well as like, how do you communicate with your players? How do you, you know, ask uh, what kind of game? What kind of game do we want to be playing together? Um, and some of that stuff as well. Um, and, and a lot of it really comes down to um, specific questions that people. Uh, right, right now we're sort of trolling the internet for interesting uh, game master questions, uh, but we've gotten a few questions from listeners already that that have uh, messaged in and, and asked their questions, and, and that's exactly what we what we want to have, where people can say, "I've got this situation that's coming up uh, in my game," and. Um, I would really love to to have some advice for what I what I should do next. Um, and that's that's, awesome. that's where we really where, want to be. Where can they contact you? Um, you can. We have a web submission form at uh, the the next next session podcast. I'm sorry is the is the website uh, nextsessionpodcast.com. But you can also find us on Twitter at the next session uh, and s send us questions either through through Twitter or through the web web uh, uh, website. Uh, cool. Both of those work for us. Um, but what I was going to say actually was um, we've been doing all this planning for this this campaign, and I had no idea the direction the campaign was going to go when I started the campaign. <laughs> so I had some vague idea of like what the bare barest bones were for this. But I was uh, as we started planning out some of the next steps that were going to go on. Uh, even my wife reflected like, oh, I did not think this campaign was going to travel in, in that direction. <laughs> and a lot of that is just the choices that we make is that you make as players and that and that I make in response to to your choices. Um, and that just becomes sort of a, an interesting feedback loop. And it's one of the things I love about role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons is, yeah. is I don't have to plan out all the pieces. I only need to plan out the next the next little bit, and then right. I, I wait and see where that path goes, and then I plan out the next little bit from that path. Right. Um, and each session is a is another another jump of of planning just enough to to get us to where 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 we have a, an idea for where the next pieces of the story are going. So yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, our last campaign we've talked about this before. The concert that we gave, obviously, there was no way to plan for that. <laughs> um, there's so many little best moments of that campaign where it was that style. It's like, okay, well, now they're doing this. So, well, how do I think? <laughs> Lee pies with cruddy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. How do I think like just one step ahead of where they're right now? This wasn't what I thought they were. I knew I wanted eventually them to get to that ceremony thing, but they're on their way there. So, well, I guess they're doing this now and okay, fine. Let's go. Let's go for it. You know? Yeah. And this is why often my notes include two more two more sort of scenarios after this one <laughs> that we never make it to because right. because we spend a bunch of time doing other stuff. This was this was not what I imagined you would do in order to get a ship. This was a great idea, uh, but it was not what I imagined. <laughs> you your, thought we'd just pay for it? Just be. Like, I figured you would just pay for it, or you would find you know someone. <laughs> or we crazy just go down do into the dungeons. We go down into the dungeons under the city to kill a few rats and get gold <laughs> coins. So we can... right, you just <laughs> find somebody who's who's willing to offer you a job or something, or uh, you know, there there were lots of other directions. Dishwasher, that could have gone. Really <laughs> yeah, we could break some of the crates for, for a while. So uh, I I thought there were there were lots of other directions you could have gone, and I knew this was a possibility, but I hadn't necessarily planned the, planned this out. Uh, to nice. work out this way, so um, it was super fun to then respond to that choice and figure out what what the next pieces are. Yeah, it's also fun to plan it out as a team, the three mm -hmm. of us. You know, to 
talk that out. Um, mm-hmm. That's always my one of my favorite sort of nodal moments in a D and D game is that moment where the players have to like, okay, <laughs> so we have to get from A to B. Where are our skills? Um, actually, uh, the Umbrella Academy. Anyone watch that show? Oh yeah, yeah. great. So, I watched some of it. I don't think I finished it. Oh, I, oh, I really just good. love it. I just, I just think it's it's just so well written, and you know, it's what heroes should have been. And yeah. um, <laughs> and there's this scene. I won't spoil it, but there's this scene at the end of season two that I just watched earlier today, at where our heroes ha- make a plan. They're like, okay, here's the situation. What do we do? And I, I always just love that because in the yeah. in the Marvel universe, it's always just like CGI explosions, and ne- there's never that moment where it's like, okay, wait, so Thor, you can do this, and <laughs> you know, Captain America, you can do this. <clears throat> you know, it's too talky, boring for yeah. a, a billion dollar movie. But those are the moments that I really enjoy. It's that human right. character working together moment that I that I like. You know. And yeah. and uh, Umbrella Academy is great because the characters are so flawed, right? Um, yeah, and like really struggling through their own particular challenges, yeah, um, and often sort of fa- falling out from each other as a result of their. In fact, their it's flaws. hard to do that with with Marvel because it's it, it, you don't have enough of those. I mean, they basically the ones they rely on a lot traditionally is like, oh, okay, the Hulk. Like, let's do something with the Hulk. You know, like he can't get angry enough, or he he's you know whatever. But, um, but his, yeah, his I, mean, I thought they did okay. It becomes very powerful. Yeah, <laughs> but I just think like the Umbrella Academy is this example of how do you make an amazingly you know um, entertaining and meaningful show with characters that you love, with minimal CGI, but like very good CGI. Yeah, and the universe you know, isn't imploding, <laughs> you know, there's, there's things that are happening. I guess there's apocalypse, for, you know, occasionally, but, um, but anyway, we're off. But it does relate to, du- to dungeon mastering, which is how do you create a story and allow for characters to interact instead of just constantly, because there are DM styles where it's just one kind of, and then you see this, like actually the adventure zone does does that sometimes you know the podcast the adventure zone mm-hmm. with uh the McElroy uh brothers i find sometimes some of the sessions is the dm guy he's just like and then you see this thing and then you see this thing and then this amazing thing the moon opens up and the ship goes and it's like an hour and a half of him just describing to these guys like and then and and like that style of dming is so uninteresting <laughs> As a player, it's, it's more like a radio drama. Yeah, um, which <laughs> yeah. which is I actually really enjoy listening to. They do a very tight story, you know, within the the time frame that they yeah. they podcast for. But it's a very different experience, and it's a very different experience to play in that kind of thing because you know Travis and Justin and, and Clint, you know, when when Griffin is going here, let me let me describe the scene stretching out before you for forever. Um, they just have to sit there and be quiet and wait, wait for Griffin to be done. <laughs> so you notice that too, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like there's not a lot of moments where the player characters have to solve a problem and work together, you know? Mm-hmm. It's more like, and it's hilarious. The show is hilarious. It's very entertaining. But as I was listening to it, years ago when it first came out, I just thought like, oh, I wouldn't want to be a player in, in this game. It's so, Some of this is, is the difference between being a player for a, you know, a recorded or a live, live play, or like a, um, a streamed game, and being a player in like your home game. And that's right. true here for our game too. You know, there's, there's differences that I make as a game master for the game that we're playing that I might not do for, for like what? A, a personal game. Well, um, there are... Uh, moments where I'm much more mindful. Uh, the best example I can think of is I don't eat while we're <laughs> while we're doing our stream <laughs> because I don't think listeners want to listen to me eat yeah. while while we're doing our stream. True. Um, but the dynamic of me like um, having having a drink, uh, you know, a, a, a cider or a beer or something, and and eating some some chips while we're in the middle of playing our game or having a quick break for like. Uh, does anybody else want ice cream? Let's get some ice cream. 
like those are a change in the player dynamics and those reflect down as a change in the in the game dynamics as well so some of those things eventually come out in the in a different style of play um, and sometimes it means a lot more goofiness like it, it uh, I've I've played D&D with Adam uh, and on a personal level and I've watched him do some really wild stuff uh, some of which is maybe not appropriate to talk about on, the, on this podcast, um, but that comes out of the the uh, less serious atmosphere of you know we're eating chips and and we're we're chatting sometimes as players and and be like oh Adam this reminds me a lot of that game did you play that game yet um, and like that'll come up in the middle of our campaign and that's okay that's a comfortable space uh, because we know that we're really here to have a good time uh, and making it further through the campaign is a, a fun thing that we all want to do together, but not necessarily something that we are like uh, really strapped down to, to be able to do. Whereas this, this podcast, we want the listeners to, to jump in and, and be a part of us and be a part of the journey and the story with us. And so there's a, there's a shift and a change to the, the attitude and the approach that we have. Uh, both me as a game master, but also all of us as players, yeah. uh, I think bring in that same, that same concept. Yeah, interesting. All right. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle, in which we highlight Adam and Adam from GameToGrow.org slash newsletter. And also, uh, if everyone wants to uh, listen next time, you can wait. (laughs) (laughs) You can wait. (laughs) And everyone out there, please take care of yourself and always roll a natural 20 because... You deserve it. <laughs>